Chambers of the Occult may contain content that might not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. I was gonna I was gonna say good afternoon, but I mean it's not even afternoon for like us, so I don't I don't know what it is for everyone else, but I mean yeah. Welcome I back to episode nine of <laughs> Chambers of the Occult. <laughs> Unwelcome. Yeah, we have a new voice today. Here to introduce yourself. You know who I am. We know oh who God, you I are. Am. But I'm the, the listeners the- don't. All right, do you want to start this over and, like... uh... I'm the man, the myth, the legend. The (laughs) hottest homunculus around. What? (laughs) What is your name, Mr. Homunculus? Uh, Of course, it's only the greatest name of all time, Milo. Milo. (laughs) M-I-L-O, not M-Y-L-O, not M-Y-L-O-H. Oh, I've never heard that one. It's an H at the end. Oh, and then we I also have, have Alexis. I ask, I ask that exact same fucking question. And not question. a new guest. Yeah, Alexis, you didn't even say welcome. Like, you didn't even say hi or anything. Yes, I not did. Even, I literally said not hi. Even, not even saying hi to me, man. I, I think I, that's the thing, that you say hi and we don't hear you. And we always yes. tell you to say hi again. <laughs> yes, every freaking episode. Hello, everyone. Hi. For yes, we episode, do have a uh, guest. Yeah, so we decided to... Mix it up a bit with someone else in here. Let I wouldn't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily describe myself as a guest. More like um, intruder. Oh, okay. We have an intruder. All right. I was ready to like clap back at that, but honestly, I agree with you. So yeah, yeah. I, think <laughs> I we'll already, pick him up at the end. Already, the energy in this room is so. <laughs> periodically, we are wanting to invite some guests onto the podcast. Let us know if you think that's a good idea or anything like that. So, yeah, uh, hopefully, Milo is not a bad first impression. <laughs> he probably oh, will be, watching. but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this week, I mean, I don't have a theme. It's just a story. <laughs> um. <laughs> Welcome to episode nine. Now, I'm going to start with a true crime story. And for this, we're going to leave. We're going to stay in North America. And we're just going to head to Canada. Oh, Oh my God. How exciting. Yeah. Now, we're heading to Vancouver, British Columbia. What did you do to my nostrils? That's just how I draw fucking notes. Sorry, Milo, Milo is sharing his screen, just like doodling as we're talking, and he's drawing me currently, and like he made my nose look like, I, like a I, duck's feet or I something. I draw like, everyone's I fucking nose like that. <laughs> God. No, I see you're that. Not right. Sorry, Jay. Anyway, sorry, Jay. No, no, you're, yeah, you're yeah, good. Yeah. I see that. I'm gonna. <laughs> no, Milo, yeah. leave it. Leave it. I can post that on our Instagram. <laughs> Please, <laughs> actually, yes. Yeah. If Milo's okay. So, um, anyway, we're going to Canada, and yeah. we're not going to be there for too long because mm-hmm. there will be some traveling involved. But the year is 2013. So, okay, okay. Pretty recent. Pretty, yeah, pretty 11, year, 11 years ago. Yeah. So it's here in Canada that we meet Alyssa Lamb. Have you heard about her? Yes, no. I do. I know exactly what case ah! this is. <laughs> cool. I love That's this great. case. So, All right. Perfect. Okay. So Alyssa Lamb, in 2013, she was a 21-year-old student attending the University of British Columbia. And she was the daughter of immigrants from Hong Kong. She was Asian Canadian and she had, she was in school, but even though 
she was in school, she only managed to complete three courses during her three years in the university. Um, in addition to that, she was also an aspiring blogger. And in 2010, she created a blog spot named um, Ether, Ether Fields. Um, and in this blog uh, spot, she shared photos of models and fashionable clothes, as well as entries on her struggles with mental illness. So she was pretty open, but she also liked fashion. So she just posted what she wanted. Nice. Uh, two years later, after that blog spot, she would start a new account on Tumblr. Do any of you use Tumblr? Yes. <laughs> no. Religiously. <laughs> love Chronically. <laughs> Too much. Good to know. Um, this will come up later. So she named her Tumblr uh, Nouvelle Nouveau. And aside from fashion photos, she also posted quotes and a few entries using her own words, um, you know, with her mental struggles. Um, and then she decided to take a semester off school where she was going to go to a California trip a solo adventure along the West coast of the U S and she, uh, and this journey was like a way for her to explore new places, experience a different culture and enjoy the freedom of solo traveling. Now, her, what was that? Nothing. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you get a voice. Yes. I want to like already. I want to like, just like, I like how you're presenting this information because I know this case and mm -hmm. I'm I'm already intrigued. I don't know just how you're going to tell. No, it. and if at some point I leave something out, which maybe I won't, or maybe like I'll forget a detail. Feel free to like chime in. Okay, cool. <laughs> now <laughs> for this road trip, we're talking about. No, that's great. That's great. Good. Yeah, no, that's perfect. <laughs> what about you, Alexis? <laughs> Wait, I think this is the first time on the podcast we've like actually known somebody else's case. No, I think I, I think well, besides we, besides well, Columbine, I guess. Yeah. But like I Columbine isn't every, even like a like a case case. It's just like a national tragedy that we all know. Type yeah. Of thing. You were saying, Alexis. Uh, I think every episode has a case that we know of, even if it's just like the name of it and not really anything mm -hmm. about it. Like yeah, that's, yeah, that's true as well. Yeah, that's why this is the person details. that like one of us like no knows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited to cover this case. Um, cool. So she was going to go on a California road trip. Well, I mean, a whole West Coast road trip. And while her parents did not approve of her traveling by herself, um, they did agree that it might help, you know, like be like a sort of refresher and help her hit that restart button that she needed to go back to school. So maybe taking a semester off school would be like beneficial for her because she was struggling in college. Yeah. So um, Alyssa did make her parents feel better by telling them that she would call them daily and she did so that kind of helped them be okay with the whole um trip and she traveled by amtrak train um and inner city buses as well so it was all public transportation yeah and she was traveling from san diego to santa cruz california but during that trip she made a stop in los angeles damn she traveled that far yeah <sighs> It was I've a been whole on a, off. Oh man, I've been on a Greyhound from Los Angeles to here, and I was fucking miserable. Dude, yeah. It, oh, were you traveling by yourself? No. Um. So this happened a couple of like maybe like two years ago. The car that my family was taking for a vacation, the wheel like caught on fire and kind of oh, exploded. Damn. Um. So oh. we had to. <laughs> so we so we had to take a great <laughs> it's okay we were all fine you said uh, that so casually <laughs> well because everyone was okay we didn't die did we die no I, I'm alive. I don't think so I don't know. <laughs> your family history so i feel like that might contribute to why you didn't enjoy the road trip <laughs> yeah, i mean the fact that you were in like los angeles anyway is where you first went wrong so i love <laughs> hey I'm, I my grandmother lives in Los Angeles. I love Los Angeles. <laughs> the what part? Huh? L.A. is like you visit once and then you never go back. I don't know. What? Or you only go for what? Disneyland or like, <laughs> or like Universal. Yeah. I don't know. yeah, or the Queen Mary or something else big. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we're going for Disneyland, so I don't. Yes. I can't really. Say. As Alexis said, anyways, um, <laughs> two days after her arrival, um. She checked in in a budget hotel in downtown L.A. Oof. So it was on January 26th. 
Uh, this hotel was built in 1924. It was a 15-story building with 600 rooms known as the Cecil Hotel. Ah. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Thing. Now, this hotel is just infamous for suicides and other violent deaths. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also home to some to several serial killers who I will not be mentioning today because those are future cases to cover. Mm-hmm. And okay, I don't know if you... Know. I don't know if you heard me or like when I picked it up, but when you said she checked into a hotel, I audibly went, uh, because like I know exactly what hotel it is. Hotel California? (laughs) Honestly, Um, I think Hotel Cecil kind of is the quintessential Hotel California. I'm going to be completely real. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll find out. I mean, I'm not actually covering the hotel as its own thing, but I'm just Mm -hmm. covering her staying at the hotel. Now, the reports say that Elisa, um, she initially was assigned a shared room um, because it was supposed to be an affordable hotel. Um, And she was in a shared room on the hotel's fifth floor with a bunk bed. But eventually, she was moved to another room because the the roommates that she was staying with in that room, uh, they complained, complained about a certain odd behavior. So... There's no explanation on what that odd behavior was. Um, yeah. Alyssa was just moved from a share room to a private room. Thank God. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and on the day of her supposed checkout on January 31st, Alyssa was nowhere to be seen and her parents had stopped receiving calls from her. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> wait, exactly. wait. You said, okay, you said she had mental, actually, is, go. Yeah, Milo, do go I, ahead. I feel like I know what you're talking about now, Yeah, but. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it was probably, you guys probably know, it was a decently yeah. popular story. Okay, I have a lot of information of, of, of this, so. Please Continue. get into it, Let's, yes. I did yeah. like a deep dive and I was really into this. So I think you're really going to appreciate the information if you already know something of the case. Yeah, I got really into this case. So I want yeah. to say it. So she was nowhere to be seen during the checkout time. Um, her parents stopped receiving her calls. So because the parents were getting the calls daily and when they, they just stopped, um, they called the uh, Los Angeles Police Department. Um, and then the L.A. Police Department started a search operation. And even the parents came down from Canada to LA. Damn. So, yeah, yeah. I would. If if I LAPD did course. something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the police were able to search uh, public parts of the hotel, but they were not able to obtain like a search warrant for like each and every single room. Yeah. Um, and they searched every floor, including the roof. Um, the hotel employees also remember seeing her around the hotel on the day that she disappeared. Um, and one of the last people to see Alyssa uh, was a woman named Katie Orphan. Ooh, and she worked in a... Book- that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Katie worked in a hotel, <laughs> in a bookstore next to the hotel. Um, ironically, the bookstore's name is also... The bookstore's name is The Last Bookstore. Nice. Kind of a cute little nick like name though. Anyway, yeah, that is very sweet. It, it's ironic for this case. But anyway, <laughs> um Katie said that Alyssa was happy when she talked to her. Um and she was helping her find books and music that uh she helped her check out books and music from the store. Um and Alyssa was telling Katie that she was making some of those purchases for uh friends and family back home. So Alyssa had plans to go back home. Now, during this Mm -hmm. whole time, um, the hotel found footage of Alyssa. um, And this footage would only lead to more questions. Um, Now, I should have had this ready for all of you, but I'm going to pull it up right now and I'm going to send it to the group chat so you can actually see what is happening. Okay. Because fill in the blank space for talk. (laughs) No, because... By group chat, do you mean on our phone? The one that I... Yeah, the the lieutenant one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love yeah. lieutenant. Me too. And I Anyways. forgot how I. No. Um. So this video. Let's find it. Oh, there it is. Um. 
It's on YouTube. It's pretty much everywhere that you look for it. Feel free to like take a look at the video. Um, mm-hmm. If you haven't seen it already, Kai. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, the if our listeners video. want to take a look at the video, you're yeah. more than welcome to. Yeah. If you're like at work or driving and you can't see the video, that's fine. Um, I can tell you I what happened the on the video. video. So it was the LA uh, PD released the footage to the public on February 15th. That was a week, two weeks after she had disappeared. Um, and they, the police believe that this was the last sighting of Alyssa um, in a hotel elevator before she disappeared. So the footage of Alyssa uh, in the elevator, you can see that she's acting unusual. And she mm-hmm. steps into the elevator and then she begins, begins to press every button. Then she stands in a corner. And a few seconds after that, she approaches the elevator door and very quickly sticks her head out, looks to both sides, and then she steps back in, and then she's leaning against the wall, almost like in the corner, like she's trying to hide for some from someone. Um, and after a few seconds, she approaches the elevator door again. Now she stands there. She doesn't step out. She's just standing by the elevator door. And then she slowly exits the elevator one foot at a time. Uh, and then she comes back in. Um... There's a part there where she's not fully visible, but you can still see, like, the bottom torso of her through the video. Uh, she eventually steps back in the elevator, starts pressing buttons again um, a second or third time. Um, and then she steps out of the elevator. Um, and then she's making this, like, hand gestures like she's talking to someone. Uh, she moves her arms around one more time. She doesn't walk back into the elevator this time. And the door's closed. And that is the last video of Alyssa Lamb in the hotel or anywhere. Now, there's something really odd about this. Um, it's hard to see because I can't see it in that video. I don't know if it's true or not or it's speculation. But apparently there's 54 seconds missing from the video in the elevator. Mm-hmm. Apparently you can see when the timestamp jumps those 54 seconds. But it's a really, really bad stamp. I tried looking at different videos and I just can't read it. So there's, like, theories that, like, someone, like, messed with the footage. Yeah. Someone tampered with it? Yeah. Yeah, Pretty much. Like, yeah, the numbers on it are weird and everything, so. Yeah. Yeah, I I remember seeing the video. It was, like, really popular at one point. Yeah. Yeah. 11 years ago. And it's just weird because you can't read that time, like, the timestamp. Now, two detectives were called to search the hotel. And the lead investigator was named Wallace Tennell. Um, he was a level D3 detective, which is the highest level of detective that someone could be. Um, and the other detective was Gregory uh, Stearns. He was a level two D2 detective. Now, they got, they got a call from a missing person in the Cecil Hotel and wanted investigators to go and search. And the reason was because it, she was a Canadian citizen visiting that went missing. I don't know if that was like more important than normal or not, but because she was a Canadian citizen visiting, they they kind of took action right off the bat. Yeah. And I assume yeah. that the parents coming down from Canada also added pressure to them. Yeah. Now, eventually, the parents did end up suing the police department because there were reasons that I didn't get into. Um, but that they were handling the case incorrectly or there were things that they didn't do. Um, so I was actually able to get my hands on a copy of the court transcript. Ooh. Which is really, really exciting. Um, it is. And I was about to say, this was like is... anything involving the LA Police Department, I'm like <laughs> something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is where they were interrogating. Uh, Detective Wallace Tennell. Um, and the question that they asked him was, um, where, where she was or what? It's a weirdly worded question. Okay. Uh, do you recall what you did when you went to, down to the Cecil Hotel? Or what did you do after you heard you got a missing person? And then the detective answered, well, I recall going to the Cecil Hotel that day. We set up a command post in the lobby. As teams responded, um, the decision was to, well, start off by searching the entire hotel. 
we needed mm. more bodies, personnel, just to respond to assist us. Once we got enough personnel, we assigned a team and we had a hotel employee who had a master key that could access rooms. What everyone was told to do is they were assigned floors and they were to go to rooms. Uh, they were to go room to room, door knock. If there was somebody there, open it and ask permission to go in and search. By searching, I don't mean that they were going in and looking in trash cans, pulling out drawers. It was to look to see in there um, and see whether a human being could possibly hide or be to check the area. Yeah. No luggage open or anything like that. All closets, every nook and cranny of the building where we thought was a room, locked or unlocked, it was open, it was to be searched. And then a follow-up question to this was, do you know how long that search took? The detective answered, it took quite a while, at least a day, and we also brought in K-9 units. There might have been at least, going off memory, six or seven teams from the California emergency. I forget what it is. They have <laughs> set dogs, and they were tasked with using the dogs. After the search had been done, the dogs went through from top to bottom. So I I just want to, like, add this answers and, like, this questionnaire, because it kind of, like, tells you of what was happening in the hotel during the time that she was missing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the detective also said um, in the court, well, um, that she hadn't left for good. There was an intention of coming back, because if I recall, the laptop things of value were there. So it assumed she would be coming back. Yeah. Because nothing, you know, phones. Um, it's a fair laptop. assumption. Yeah, everything was still in the room. <laughs> yeah. Now, remember how we said that there was 54 seconds missing from the elevator video? Yep. They also ended up asking Detective Wallace about the elevator footage. And the question yeah. was, have you ever heard of any, have you he ever heard of any thought that, sorry, it's, it's, it's like weird question. And then like asking it corrects himself. And then it's like a good question. <laughs> Have you ever heard of anybody saying that they thought that the video had been tampered with prior to the reason I'm bringing this up? As you know, this has been involved in the Internet. It's And supposedly the Internet, the supposed experts, are saying that the video has been tampered with. Do you have any knowledge of that or was it ever suspected by the LAPD that it had been? The detective then ends up answering... Not tampering, no, because when Detective uh, Marsha and his partner were reviewing the video footage, um, that was done at the hotel on the system itself. It wasn't a copy that was downloaded and then reviewed. No, uh, we were looking at it right then and there in real time. Mm. Weird. Which I think it's kind of important to know because some people say that maybe the police mess with it, but if they were looking yeah. at it... At the hotel in their system, I think it would have been fine. I mean, he could just lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is true. And there would be the LAPD. The <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Not gonna get into that. Um, but during this whole investigations, um, the residents of the Cecil Hotel, the the Cecil Hotel at the time was like a, it was a budget inn, but at the same time they had like permanent residents. So yeah. from what I floors were for them were like permanent residents and the lower floors were for like budget people that were like just passing through the city um mm -hmm. and all these people were just asking if they've seen her all that stuff um and some of the residents started to complain about a few things um some of the things they complained was that there was a weak pressure in the bathroom taps and showers and a flood in one of the rooms on the fourth floor yeah. Now, I was able to find a newspaper clipping that was really interesting. Oh, that's awesome. Um, the newspaper clipping. Uh, so there was a British guest who had been staying at the Cecil Hotel for over a week with her husband. Her name is Sabrina. Ooh, last name. Bo. <laughs> Sabrina Bo. 
Sabrina Bow. Nice. How do you spell her um, last name? B a u g h. It might be. It might be like bow. Bow. Yeah. Bow. I was bow. thinking bow. like bow. Uh, <laughs> close uh, enough. It might be bow. Okay, so Sabrina you told the reporters. Like, I mean, it could enough. be either one. What we'll uh, her? Sabrina told the reporters that the water. So th- this is her quote: "The water did have a funny taste." <laughs> <laughs> and then when you turn the tap on, the water was coming black first for two seconds, yeah. and then when it's back to normal. I don't <laughs> think she said. Right, we man. thought it was just the way it was here, she told her. <laughs> I'm giving her. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you thought it was just the yeah. No, oh, at least Californians. No, no. <laughs> I thought it was just black water. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I mean, no. maybe she thought it was that no, one. No, no, no. Is that a hotel? No. Wait, what? No, that's still something. That's not normal. No, no, no. I was saying that maybe she thought it was normal because she was staying in a budget hotel. Um, no. Still. No. That's not. No. No. Yeah, so that's what she told reporters. Um, And it wasn't until one of the residents complained to the maintenance worker um that the maintenance worker went to investigate um and it was tuesday uh, february 19th <laughs> so yeah you know what's happening yeah, um, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> it was 18 days after she was last seen the maintenance the maintenance worker was still getting complaints for water so he headed to the rooftop and in the rooftop there were four 1000 gallon water tanks that were about 8 feet tall um, so he walks up there and he notices that there's a ladder next to one of them and that the lid wasn't all placed all the way, like sitting fl- flush on it. Um, so he decided to check it out. He climbed up the ladder. He looked in the tank and he found the body of Alyssa Lamb floating face up in the tank. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was really, like, you know how, like, there's the type of cringe where it's, like, like you're so grossed out by something <laughs> where, like, you physically, like, like tense up at it? Yeah. That was me when you initially started describing the, like, the funky taste in the water and everything like that. Because yeah. I knew exactly what it was. And I was like, ah. Eh. So. That's the thing. Um, For 18 days, uh, people were drinking water. Or taking oh. showers yep. with water that oh she was, I don't know what to call it. She was stuck she, in the water tank. Well, she would have, she would have been fully, if not fully decomposed, but in late, in stage, the water. late yeah. stage decomposition. Yeah. So I actually have some information about that as well. But mm-hmm. real quick before we get there, when he looked in the water tank, the maintenance worker, he said that it appeared to be like half to a three quarters full of the tank so it wasn't full all the way um and her clothing was also found in the tank um as well as a hotel key card and a watch now something interesting about this to get to the roof that door has an alarm Mm -hmm. so if for any reason someone that doesn't work at the hotel where to go up to the roof and just open the door an alarm would have gone off and there was no reports of anyone hearing yeah. an alarm now the worker found the body and he called 911 the LA fire department number 9 responded uh, to determine the, the death at 10:22 a.m. and then detective Wallace arrived at 1:48 p.m. um the body to get the body out of the water tank they had to first of all drain the tank and then they had to cut it open yeah because remember it was an eight feet tall tank so there was no way someone could go in there and see things Mm -hmm. in detail now this is some more transcript from the uh from the courtroom for Mm -hmm. from yeah um and the the question (laughs) is (laughs) did they just no one cut up a hole on the top that just went through the hatch that she at the top correct it's a weird question i know <laughs> they say it no, is sir. 
Go ahead. No, I was just say yeah, like the 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 police investigations and the court questioning, it's all so jumbled in this case. It's really weird. It, it really is. Um they said no, sir, and then the question is, how did she get pulled out? The fire department rescue team actually cut a hatch at the bottom. Oh, did they? Yeah, they had to, because now she was basically almost resting on the floor. All the water had been drained out, so they cut a hatch at the bottom of the tank and pulled her out that way. As I understand, she was naked. Yes, sir. The body was naked. Yes, sir, she was. But her clothes were there. Yes. Now, during this whole research, there was a lot of debate of whether her body was found naked. Other people saying it was found with her clothes on. I'm going based on the official documents. Um, because not only did I get my hands on the court transcript, but also on the autopsy report. Oh, nice. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I it was there. You do you, bro. You do you? Yeah. yeah. I'm proud. So the autopsy report said the following. The body was not clothes, not clothed, and I inspected the clothing. The clothing consisted of one pair of black shorts, size men's medium, with a logo on the left front leg, one green shirt labeled JJM, size large, with a logo on the back neck labeled Alexander Keith's, India Pale Ale, and a logo on the left front chest of a deer with antlers. And the <laughs> and the words turn over the turn and the words turn over the terrain. One pair of black underwear with lace trim labeled Calvin Klein, size small. One pair of black polka dot sandals labeled Birkins with the following numbers and letters written on the heels, 39, 55, 250, L8, M6, and one red sweater shirt zipper. Front with hood labeled American Apparel, size extra small, that is wet. Now, all, this, uh, all the items had sand-like particles attached to the fabric and loosely present in the fold of the clothes and on the drying mats. Did you mention her shirt, or did yes. they not? Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a black sh uh, shirt. I no, one green shirt no. labeled JJ. Yeah. yeah, it was a green shirt. Now, there was something else from the autopsy that was mentioned there. Um, as always, if you're not aware, folks, trigger warning. Um, it says adult female. The anus is edematous and showing pooling of blood in the subcutaneous <laughs> sub tissue surrounding the, the orifice. Mm -hmm. um, and then the two, the two detectives were also present during the autopsy. They're considered witnesses during the autopsy. And it says Detective Wallace Tennell uh, and Stern. And then they give their badge number. I'm not going to say them because who knows if they're still working or not. <laughs> yeah. of LAPD witness the autopsy. Now, during this whole time that they found the body, the parents were, I don't know if the parents were still in LA or not, um, but they also did get to talk to um, Alyssa's sister. Her name is Sarah. Um, and the sister said that Alyssa had a history of depression and bipolar disorder, and that Alyssa was taking four medications. Uh, Will Butrin, La mm -hmm. Lamotrigine, and Quetapine. I can't say that last one. Um, so that's Wait, three. Type, and then she's them in the that, chat. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, like, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, why can't, mean. why can't pharmaceutical companies name <laughs> the, the doctors are like, um, let me show how smart Long I am. <laughs> and they give it the weirdest Long name ever. Well, beautiful. Okay, I said um, What's the There we go. Yeah, oh. yeah, so that's three of the four because the sister said that she couldn't recall the name of the last one. 
Um, but the sister, Sarah, did say that Alyssa had no suicidal, no suicidal ideations um, or n- known prior attempts. So even though she had these conditions, the sister said she never really acted acted on anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and when word got out, you can only imagine how the residents of the hotel felt drinking that water. Um, because like I said, they've been drinking that water, sharing for that water for two weeks. Um, so some residents temporarily moved out. Other people stayed in the hotel. Um, and the only water that was running uh, was toilet water. So there, you wouldn't be able to shower or drink or like cook with it, but the only water was toilet water. Question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Did anybody get sick from drinking the water? No, no. And actually, some there's some more um, newspaper clippings things that I found related to like water contamination and things. Um, so the water got tested <laughs> twice, and it was indicated that the water was safe from a quote unquote. Microbi- microbiological standpoint. Mm-hmm. Now, the person said, we can't say what the quality of the water was prior to the samples. We can only say that the water met the standard at the time that it was sampled. Chlorine in the water probably killed any bacteria in the tank where a lamb's body was found. Mm. Uh, now, of course, they said that to make the public feel better about the situation yeah. that they drink water that had been, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now there was also a high school cl- uh, classmate, um, Alex <laughs> Resetta, no way, of Vancouver, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um, mm-hmm. uh, she called Alyssa's death uh, shocking, and she said that she had been one of the friendliest people she knew. Um, he knew. Oh. Um. This is the last Uh person I expect out of all my friends to have something like this happen to her, Alex said. Um, And Alex believes that Alyssa Alyssa, um, had just gone to California for holiday, saying that she had posted pictures on Facebook from tourist locations, such as the San Diego Zoo. Mm. Now, they also spoke to someone from the university, um, spokesman Randy Schmidt. Um, He confirmed that Alyssa had attended summer uh had attended summer school at the university but that she was not registered for the current session and that's once again because she took a semester off for this west coast road trip Mm -hmm. that's why she wasn't enrolled for that session because she was taking like a break not because like she didn't have plans to come back it was a break Mm -hmm. um the investigation of the autopsy ended up deciding that it was an accident as much as it's, it's it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, yeah. And that the cause of death was drowning. That there were no signs of foul play. Yeah, how do you guys feel about that? Um, That's what confused me the most, I guess, about this case. Not necessarily confused me, but like... I don't want to spoil like an ending or a conclusion you have, but... There's just so much that I feel is left unsolved with this case. Yeah. And yeah. So I don't know much about it. But yeah. There's a lot more that I have to tell y'all. Um, so real quick, we're going to get, we're going to like skim, maybe dig a little into some of the theories surrounding her case. Um, because a popular theory that people had is that she was off her meds. Mm. However, yeah. <laughs> during, the, during the autopsy, I'm so, so funny, glad I found this. <laughs> Alexis, are you off your meds? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> okay. Um, the theory was that she was off her meds. Um, and I don't agree with this theory, but I'm going to share it with all of you because it's a popular theory out there. The reason I disagree yeah. is because there was a toxicology report during the autopsy. And the toxicology report says bile, heart blood, liver tissue, stomach contents, spleen, and brain had been submitted to the lab. A comprehensive screen Mm. was tested. Now, the uh, toxicology report returned and the reports um, said a few things. So this is where I get a little scientific, but also like I break things down because I had to break them down for myself. (laughs) a bile ethanol concentration of 0.002 
sorry, 0 0.02 grams per cent um, indicates that there is presence of alcohol in the body at the time of the death or sample collection. However, this isn't enough to tell us if she was under the influence until it's compared with blood or uh, blood al alcohol concentration. Now, the blood uh, toxicology report came back negative for the presence of ethanol. Um, and this could be due to a couple reasons, but the most common reason is that post-mortem redistribution, which means that after she, her death, uh, the distribution of the substances, uh, in this case ethanol, within the body can change. Ethanol, like yeah. other substances, may redistribute from organ and tissues into the blood or other or form the blood into organs and tissues. Um, these re redistribution can sometimes result in a lower detectable level of ethanol in the blood post-mortem, especially if the blood alcohol level was declining at the time of the death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can't tell for sure if she was under the influence of alcohol at the time. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, I also um, sort of disagree with like that theory of just her being okay. off her meds and like that's the cause for things i don't know yeah. i feel like she definitely could have been off of them and that made things worse but i i feel I, like there's something like more like like ominous at play okay yeah. Um, yeah. yeah 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 so the blood did come back positive for a few more um medications um, she took some ibuprofen. Ibuprofen, yeah. But in addition to that, there was also um, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. We got this. Okay. Uh, here, this is one. If I can open the chat. <laughs> here it is. Bupropion? Bupropion, yes. Um, okay. And this is an antidepressant medication primarily used to treat major depressive disorders and seasonal yeah. affective disorder. It's also used to aid in smoking um, cessation. <laughs> now, the other one, I'm also going to type it in the chat because teamwork. <laughs> Makes a dream work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Venlexithin? Wait, Venlafixin. Venlafixin? <laughs> Would it be venlafaxine? Venlafaxine. Yeah. So this is yeah, a prescription. Yeah. So this is also a prescription medication, and it's primarily used to treat a uh, major depressive disorder (MDD) and generalized anxiety disorder (GAD). It also mm. helps with um, <laughs> social anxiety dis disorder and panic disorder. <laughs> so those were two of the things that were also right. that were found in her blood. Were those her like normal, just normal regular yeah, prescriptions? They were. Yeah. As, okay. During the autopsy, they also had like a bag with all her belongings that they found in her room and with her. And they had a bag. The bag had all the medications that she had taken. Not that she had taken, but that she had in her room with her. But like, yeah, yeah. That she was traveling with. Now the Depend liver came back. Go ahead. Depending on how often she took it. Well, yes. If she, if we were to. Yeah, depending on how often she took it, because uh, those kind of medications. I'm trying to think of when I was on medication, yeah. how often I took it. Yeah, no, so They're, that's our theory. Yes. Because she was in four medications. I'm going to let you know here now. Um, she They only found three of the medications in her system. Now, that oh. doesn't mean that she was technically off her medication. It simply means yeah. that it could have been like, like she could have taken that at night or like at a different time. Yeah. Not that, like, she wasn't on it. Now, the liver did come back positive for those two uh, medications that we talked about. And a third one, this is the third one I tapped it in. It's Lamotrigine. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and this is a medication used primarily for the tr treatment of epilepsy and bipolar disorder. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. This poor girl. <laughs> so... She was in four, she was taking four medications. Um, yeah. and interestingly enough, it's not that it wasn't found in her body, it wasn't tested, or maybe it was, I just couldn't uh, find what? it. I just typed in the fourth medication. Um, I don't know, we, Can you yeah, find? this 
with T pine. Um, so this fourth medication, even though it was found, like this medication was found in her belongings. Okay. Um, she like the the samples or anything like it wasn't tested for that medication. Damn. I don't know if it got tested wow. under like a different name or something else, yeah. or there just wasn't enough to test it for that. Um, but this, uh, Quitty Pine, I'm saying it wrong, <laughs> is Kitipine. also medication. What was that? Nothing. Continue. Oh, I thought you said it right. No, I don't know. It's just my guess. Ketapine. I don't know. Ketapine, yeah. Ketapine. Okay. Um, so this <laughs> one's actually used to uh, treat several mental health conditions. Um, and it's approved for the treatment of uh, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, including manic uh, episodes, depressive oh episodes, and, you know, just uh, to maintain the treatment. Now, like I said... That maybe didn't get tested because there was a lack of blood. The autopsy report says that there was a lack of blood. Um, she could have also taken it after she could have taken it after the incident if the incident didn't happen. Um, but this just disproves the most popular theory that she was having a manic episode since she was off her medications. She was yeah. not off her medications. Yeah, I don't know. Like even even if she, I know like lots of. Um... Like medications like that can be very finicky and very like yeah. like take me at this exact time or else I am going to fuck you up. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> okay. but with how That's extreme how they are. like no they yeah. seriously um with how extreme like Elisa's like behavior was at that time to me mm -hmm. it it feels like whatever was going on was fueled by her lack of medication like proper uh, medication. But like, there was like an it, there's something more. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's never felt like it was that cut and dry. No. Um, yeah. And what's interesting, the autopsy report not only like has her medication, but it tells you where she got her medication. And I think most of them, if not all of them, I think the only thing that she bought in the U.S. was ibuprofen. But all of her medications, like she got them in Canada, like it was her yeah. regular medication she was taking. Time wise, however. We don't know when she was taking them or if she took it late or early or something happened in between. Now, another theory um, is that she committed suicide. But the plans to bring gifts back home as well as to go to Santa Cruz make it highly unlikely that she had planned for, you know, uh, yeah. a suicide. Yeah. Now, also... Um, the lid of the water tank wasn't on hinges, which was also very controversial at the time. People couldn't agree on it. There was no hing hinges on the water lid, um, but it was around 18 inches by 18 inches, and it weighed about 20 pounds. And it made it highly unlikely that Alyssa would have been able to move it, especially since she would have to be on a ladder to climb the tank. So that um, also doesn't add up. Yeah. Now, Detective Wallace, um, the head detective at the time, he also had a theory. Um, they asked him about his theory in the court transcript, and this is what he says. My opinion is that she fell off her medication, and in her state, she happened to find her way onto the roof, got into the tank of water. At the time, I think that the water tank was maybe full, but as people used the tank, used water unknown to her, the level started dropping to a point where she would no longer be able to reach out and escape, and she died that way. Yeah. Now, that's not, like, a horrible theory, except for, like, what I consider, first of all, there's an alarm on the door, and also, there's, it's a big, it's 20 pounds that she would have to move on top of a ladder. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot for her, like, probably. Yeah, yeah those things kind of, just like, the alarm... Now, there was a theory that maybe she took the fire escape exit up to the um, roof. Mm. If she did, no alarm would have sound. But once again, that's just in a theory of how she got up there. Yeah. That's probably how now, she did. Yeah. Now, this is how, this is where we have a little bit of the um, more interesting theories, to simply put it that way. It was um, aliens. Yes. You're not far off, but not <laughs> alien. God. Um, another conspiracy theory is that she was trying to expose the government. 
Um, she was trying to expose what? the government's invisible technology. I think I know what this one is. <laughs> I think I'm actually I not heard. sure if I know what this one is. What? I think I've heard about okay. this before. So after, after Alyssa's body was found, there was a lot of people that took interest in the case because a lot of things didn't add up. To this, to this day, 11 years later, they still don't add up. And people have done their own digging. Now, conspiracy theories believe that Alyssa was trying to expose something called the Invisible Light Agency. Now, okay. the theory goes that Alyssa was being targeted by a soldier using an invisible generator. Um, now, at the time, there was a location on Google Maps called the Invisible Light Agency, and it was located, like the pin was located inside the hotel. However, as of 2024, it doesn't appear on Google Maps anymore. Yeah. But this brings us to the point of, remember how in the autopsy report, they said that there were some particles? hmm Yeah. There was no more investigation into what those particles were. No one kind of dug into it. Damn. The theory is that um, those particles were used for the invisible suit. And... If she, they got in an altercation like Elissa and the person, and then they fell into the like water tank, the particles don't work when they're wet. So that's the only place that they would show up. I hate everything about this theory. I think it's fucking yeah, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just wanted to share it because it's a theory that's out there. Um, yeah. So I'm going to send you right now. It's not going to let me. Come on. Okay. A screenshot of where it used to show up in Google Maps. Um, and you can like zoom into the picture and you can see that there is something called the Invisible Light Agency or like the, yeah, the Invisible Light Agency by the Cecil Hotel. It's no longer there. I looked it up. Um, but at the same time, the question is like, if it's a government secret, why would you put it on Google Maps? Yeah, what the hell. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, isn't there some like Illuminati shit, like conspiracy yeah. theories that go along <laughs> with, with this? Because case the theory too. says that like the reason she was acting weird on like the CCTV footage of the elevator was because she was talking to the man in the invisible, you know, um, suit. And that's why he doesn't show up in cam in the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why, why would this girl, this college <laughs> girl <laughs> from Canada, have <laughs> anything to do with a secret American? <laughs> you never know. Agency. Okay. I'm so glad you asked. I'm going to bring it up lightly because I didn't want to read too much into this because I didn't really fall for this theory. Oh um, but it just basically said that when she was in Canada, like she would have certain posts about like government things or, mm. or like invisible things. It's weird. It doesn't really add up. And like there's no, I can't track it back that far because I don't know where it was posted. Yeah. But it's, it's a weird thing. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there is another theory. Um, this one is interesting. Not going to lie. Um, okay. So this theory says that Alyssa might have fallen victim to bioterrorism. Oh, my God. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. Bioterrorism. Yes, I heard you. <laughs> oh, gosh. So you see... Um, there was a tuberculosis outbreak in Los Angeles um, that had been reported and it had been going on since 2007, but it gained more attention in 2012 and 2013 uh, when public health efforts intensified to control the spread among the homeless population area. Now, this theory just connects her death to the tuberculosis outbreak, um, mm -hmm. kind of like she was like a test subject type of thing. Um, because it's around the same time uh, in the same area. Um, and it specifically talks that the test that was being used during the outbreak, 
um, was named Lamb Elissa. Oh. Oh. I've definitely heard this before, but I don't. I think I've like paid attention to it. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't read too much into it. I just want to like yeah. bring it up real quick <laughs> because it oh. is a theory that's out there. Um, once you start finding more evidence, it kind of debunks it because the way to debunk this theory is that the test was actually developed before Alyssa Lamb came to LA. Um, and I just typed in the group chat what on the what the tests actually stood for. Like, there isn't a reason why it's named Lamb Alyssa. Oh, okay. Um, but the test so it's was... it's like an acronym or whatever. Yeah, it is an acronym. Mm-hmm. And it was created before her trip to, like, LA. So it's not like it, the test... I mean, the I don't know. No, nah, man, the shadow um... government has, uh, you know, future vision. And they knew. They knew she'd be in LA. They named it. Yeah. Up. See, but the test dates back, uh, the research of the test dates back to the 1990s and early 2000s. I'm going to read out the name for the listeners. Yeah, go for it. It's, okay, so it's an acronym. Lamalissa stands for Liparabinomanin Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's a so long it, name. So, like, that's it's actually an acronym. Acro- acronym. I don't know. It is kind yeah. of a crazy coincidence, mm-hmm. but I don't oh, know it, if is. it proves anything. No, and so. I think that's why it got so much attention for people because they were like, it's her name just reversed. And they were like, no, no, like this test has been in research since the 1990s and early 2000s. It's not something that we came out recently, even like in the last five years. Now, the last theory that I have for you all. Hey, and Alexis, you might remember this from last episode. Milo, you <laughs> yeah. might have heard of this. Yep. Um, the last theory is that yep. Alyssa was playing. Would you like elevator to tell them? Game. Game? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I don't want to tell them. It's just I was thinking. No, no, just earlier. the name. Yeah, the elevator yeah, game. The elevator yeah, the game. elevator game. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, when you started this case, I was like, oh, I should have seen this coming. Because he covered <laughs> the elevator case. So I should have seen I you immediately... covering this case also. Yeah, yeah no, I, I immediately thought of that. Did it for this reason. Um, Fair. I like the, I wasn't I sure like if I wanted to do this episode back. for the bonus or not, but this is a long ass story that I think I'm deserves to be s- like. I'm glad you separated this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the elevator game. Because once again, the Cecil Hotel, if you want to play the elevator game, you need to go mm-hmm. to a like a building that has more than 10 stories, 10 stories at least. Yeah. The Cecil Hotel has 15 mm-hmm. stories. But some things don't add up because, first of all, Alyssa, uh, I forgot what language the elevator game was posted originally, but it was not a language that Alyssa could understand. So, like, even if she somehow managed to read, like, the rules for the elevator game, they were not in a language she could understand. And also, we don't know why she was playing it. If she was, it's just a theory of her pressing buttons, stepping out, stepping in. It's a popular theory. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Something else. Um, Milo, you might be able to check it out. Um, mm-hmm. her after she died, um, for a good, I think six months, her Tumblr kept getting updated. Mm-hmm. Huh? Oh. Uh let me yep. check on this right now. Hang on. <laughs> check the Tumblr. <laughs> check the Tumblr. <laughs> Yeah, I. What is it's I a think, link to oh, Nouvelle Nouveau? One thing that, like, not that you forgot to mention it, but like, you did say she was very active on Tumblr, which is like, yeah. she had a pretty decently big following on Tumblr. Like, people noticed that she stopped posting for a bit, like, with disappearances and things like that. And so people outside of just her family also got interested to know what happened to oh. Lisa Lamb because of, like, her Tumblr. So when See, did I don't think that's something that I came across. When did you say that she? So 2013. Uh, yeah, so she passed away in 2013. Last updated in December of 2013. Yep. Uh, do any of you? She disappeared in February 15th. Huh? <laughs> she disappeared in February. Uh huh. Oh. 
there are multiple posts. There were a ton of February. posts she made in February. Are you yeah. a- are you able to like schedule a post on Tumblr? You um, are. Yes. Okay. Scheduling out as far as Seven December Tumblr. you want December not normal yeah. usually, but No, yeah. she did reblog something on February 15th, which is the day that she went missing that she was supposed to check out from the hotel, which is kind of sad because that is the last, but there's also one three days after she disappeared in February 18th. There's another one reblogged in February uh, 20, February 27th, March 1st, um, March 2nd, March 20th, March 27th, what? April 1st, yep. April 27th, April 30th, June yep. 2nd, and the what last the... one, December 10th. Yeah, they're all reblogs. You can't schedule yep. a reblog. Well, you can't. No, you can't schedule a reblog. Oh, you wow. You can schedule oh, a wow. post, but you can't schedule a reblog as far as I know. A reblog is a reblog. Oh. You see somebody else's post and you want to reblog it. That's if it's an original post, then... But even then, I don't even know if Tumblr had that feature back in 2013. That's true. That's true, yeah. Because if could... you look, all the things that were um, reblogged, were from either 2012 or before. So there were not things that were getting blogged like after she passed away. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Because you also see the date of the original like post. But yeah, because I thought in my head, it makes sense to, you know, schedule some of the things in advance, like the Christmas thing in December. Because the last post, it's like a house in a light bulb with a Christmas, like, with a tree next to it. So that kind of makes sense for December. But everything out, like, there was a lot of posts after she did, like, her body was found. Which is all the, th- where all the theories start to, like, rise. Yeah. And. And that's what so makes this even crazier. Actually, actually, yeah. actually, I'm looking at a comment. <laughs> I'm looking at a comment that somebody posted underneath a post. It's about this, funny enough. Yeah. Uh, I am King Vera. Uh, I'm, pretty <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure she scheduled posts because they stopped posting December of 2013. She was probably expecting to be busy traveling in sites, but still wanted to post. Only reason I believe they were scheduled by her is that a lot of her postings are spread out at night into the early morning. Also, she did post fashion on her page when she was alive. She did. But I don't know if you can but, post a, it's a thing. It's weird that it's a... Oh, but if it's like a reblog, then I guess you could schedule it. If it's from the year prior. Oh, you can. Sorry. I, I'm able to yeah. like mess with it right now. You can schedule it. Yeah. You can yeah. schedule a reblog. It would be a weird if it was a reblog at the current... During the current thing. Yeah, like after she passed away. But this is a reblog of something that she was aware of at the time. Yeah. So, once again, it just adds another layer of confusion to it. Yeah. But, yeah, that is the case of Alyssa Lamb. Unfortunately, the case was closed. And like I said, it was an accident, according to the autopsy report. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for for thank sharing. You. No, thank you. I knew. I saw I saw the video, but I just I never knew the like story anything about. It? Yeah, the story behind it. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you were talking about when you were describing the video, I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> the elevator <She's>... game. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually yeah. really glad you put onto that because I wanted to leave that theory to the end because I'm like, there's not yeah. much yeah. in the elevator game, yeah. but. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's also, real quick, why they believe those 54 seconds disappear, because she was in a different dimension during those 54 seconds. Oh! And the camera just is not able no. to, like, record, <laughs> like, through dimensions. Well, we that doesn't make any out. sense. I know, well, we it have doesn't. To test out. We, we, have to go, out. we have to We have to play the elevator game. Where are you going to find a hotel near here that's over... 
Um, just a building. But- <laughs> just a building. <laughs> there, uh, there's a building by me that's like 15 stories. We'll go there. Yeah, that honestly seems game. like it works, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is Alyssa Lamb. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I am actually really <laughs> glad that like all of you had some knowledge of this case. Yeah. Even if you didn't know what it was. I think I remember when it first came out because I wasn't yeah. that old. But I was on no. the internet. You were. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Yeah, yeah, I was. Elected. Why? 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 <laughs> uh, why? Why? I remember why? 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 What are we even talking about anymore? I don't know, dude. Okay, anyways, <laughs> who's next? Um, you guys. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, where? Huh? Take, Take over. over. Oh, I'm taking over. Yeah. Right. Uh, take the wheel. Jesus, take. No. I knew um, you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Okay. So, as I was like, you know, writing out what I wanted to say for this, I kind of realized mm-hmm. that um, it maybe was a little bit less paranormal than I originally t- intended it to be. But. Oh. <laughs> Still, 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 a, still a fun case, I guess, I want to cover. Yeah. I really so, thought my... you were going to say, as I'm writing this down, I realize I don't want to tell you this. <laughs> I mean, that too, but... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you guys don't deserve to hear. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're not worried. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, today's case actually is quite a special one for me. Um, And so that's why it is something I still did want to cover. Um, It's really the first introduction I ever had to the paranormal, paranormal experiences, anything like that. Oh, Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. The the first time I had felt like any energies or uh, felt any presences that I definitely couldn't see. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I... I was pretty young and scared at the time, and uh, now that I'm older, things definitely might be different if I ever do go back. Um, but my experience, like that I had at this place, have definitely set the foundation for any experiences I've had since that time. Um, now <laughs> I do already hear Alexis giggling. <laughs> uh, you guys probably notice I'm being pretty vague about what I'm talking about right now. You are, but that's fine. <laughs> Alexis, you know what I'm referring to based yes, off of what Yes, I do. Um, but definitely keeping it vague on purpose. Um, mm-hmm. For, for now, at least. Yeah. <laughs> so Secret. what I'm talking about is a, a beautiful construct located in a sunny coastal city here in California um, mm-hmm. that I did visit many times when I was younger. Uh, it's honestly, I mean, at least for me, it's a great piece of history. And I think one that us as a group, we all definitely need to go visit at one point. For sure. um, the RMS Queen Mary. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the, the Queen what? The what? The, the Queen RMS Mary. Queen Mary. I don't know what that is. You don't know is what it the a Queen Mary in LA? Is? It's in LA. Long, it's in Long Beach. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, you don't know what the Queen Mary is? I've probably, maybe, perhaps, in, you he know, doesn't believe in my ghosts, vast, no, in my he vast he doesn't like getting college. on boats either. Um, you know, I do I'm like here. getting on boats. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did. He's a muscle uh, inspector. Anyways, continue. Oh my God. Anyway. Um, it was kind of funny. I like definitely let out a giggle to myself earlier, Jay, when you were like, "Oh, she, you know, was in Los Angeles." It's not like the all of this <laughs> or this or the Queen Mary. Mary. Yeah, it was. It was pretty funny. Um, Are all our stories taking place in fucking California? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was about time I covered the Queen Mary. Um, no, that's yeah. great. Tell us uh, about the Queen Mary because I so, know like yeah. the bare minimum. <laughs> So, okay, so like I mentioned, um, I went to the Queen Mary a lot when I was younger. Uh, Like, I grew up in Southern California-ish, 
away. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I lived about like two, a two hour drive from Long Beach. It wasn't very far. So I would kind of go pretty often when I was younger. Um, I'm sure you guys have all heard about how, you know, like the house or the, the ship is haunted except for you, Milo, because you're a loser. Yeah. Um, okay. You live I'm under sorry. A I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you guys, you, Jay, Alexis, you guys know it's a haunted ship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll be talking about that in a bit. But first, I do actually want to get into a bit of a history lesson. <laughs> um, so this is what I meant, where it's less paranormal than I thought. <laughs> no, that's fine. You said history lesson, and I was going to be like, war? Yes. <laughs> kind of. I don't know um, this. Please educate me. Awesome. So the RMS Queen Mary uh, was originally constructed to actually be a luxury super ocean liner. What are you laughing at? Hello. <laughs> can we mute her? Is like, is that a thing? Or yeah, oh my gosh! Right? Why? <laughs> no, stop, stop, Do you stop. want to though? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the Queen Mary. Um, it was it was built to be a luxury, uh, super ocean liner. Um, that along with its sister ship, the RMS Queen Elizabeth. Um, the two of them would have had a weekly express travel service um, between the port city of Southampton, England, um, Cherbourg Harbor, England, and New York. So it was really just supposed to be like a, a, a luxury cruise line um, of ships for travel throughout New York to England. Mm -hmm. um, it was a beauty of a ship, if I do say myself, say so myself, uh, mm -hmm. that was designed to stand in a class entirely of its own, and it managed to do exactly that. Um, the Queen Mary was so grand for its time, um, and it really lived up to a lot of expectations that it set. Now, for the longest time, actually, I did think that the Queen Mary was originally or is, is an american ship um even mm -hmm. with the name of the queen mary because americans are weird and we name stuff after the british sometimes <laughs> anyway um but like through doing more research about this i you know it it's it's an english ship uh which was so interesting for me to learn um mm -hmm. So the Queen Mary began its construction in December of 1930 in Clydebank, Scotland, and of course was named after Queen Mary, the current Queen of England at that time. Uh, there's actually a like funny story that goes about the name for it that um, when the people who were building the ship were looking for their name, uh, they were originally wanting to name it after Queen Victoria, who was. Uh, King George V's, um, like, grandmother. She Mother. was the previous queen, yeah. So they reached out to King George to get permission to use the finest Queen of England's name for their ship. And mm -hmm. uh, King George responded with, oh, of course you can use her name. I'm sure my wife, Queen Mary, would be delighted to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're like, gonna oh. ask her. Yeah, they're like, oh, shit. Um, we meant Queen Victoria, but I guess we can't say that anymore. So they ended up just naming it the Queen Mary. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's they're not, not too sure how that is, He really did. No, like I read that and I was like, okay, like you go King George. Like, <laughs> hell yeah, for backing up your proud. wife like that. Yeah. Yeah, proud of I mean, I'm wife. Sure oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was built by the John Brown and Company for the uh, the Cunyard the Cunyard line. Um, it was a <laughs> British shipping and cruise line that still actually does exist today, which I find pretty interesting. Um, oh. Yeah. So the ship's maiden voyage. Um, side note: I refuse to personify a ship and use like <laughs> she pronouns for it. So you I'm will. <laughs> I mean, I don't is, understand. Uh, things don't have gender. <laughs> Spanish, <laughs> French, um, Czech, other languages. Yeah, we'll add a gender to like everything, but not English. No, I'm not going to be like, oh, her maiden voyage. No, that's a ship. <laughs> that's not. That's not a girl. I'm sorry. Um, uh -huh. Talk about her maiden yeah. voyage. <laughs> 
the ship's maiden voyage was on May 27th, 1936, um, departing from Southampton, England. So it made its way all the way from Southampton to eventually New York um, on its like cruise line where it was supposed to be at. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked up at Milo's drawings and it made me lose focus for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Milo, like, I don't know if this is actually recording the screen or not, but you should screenshot her or save it and then send it to us <laughs> definitely yeah. before you delete okay. it like before you're done with it okay sorry <laughs> sorry God. no because it's art it's art it's, good. it's, no, it's good it's good, it's good. It's good. i'm pretty it's sure good. that's why alexis was giggling yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay all right all right serious mode um, <laughs> Okay, so yeah, like I said, it was a beautiful luxury ship. It was designed to be the best of the best um, to compete with any other ship that was out there. That was literally the reason why it was made. It was made to be the prime example of an ocean liner at that time. Um, It was made with five dining areas and lounges, two cocktail bars and swimming pools, a grand ballroom, a library, a gymnasium, a squash court, and even a full hospital um, on the boat itself. Um, It was a huge ship. It it measured uh, 1,019.5 feet long. it was one yeah. of the biggest ships at the time. It weighed um, 81,237 tons. Damn. <laughs> but no, yeah, it was built to be just the most luxurious cruise ship out there, essentially. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it was made with all of that. Um, but perhaps the Queen Mary accomplished its task a little too well in being the best of the best. <laughs> um, as in September of 1939, it was docked, and that would be the last time it would carry any civilian passengers for the next six years. Um, wait, wait. So, like, how many groups, like, how many times did it take people into the ocean before it got docked? Um, for two years. Uh, it was only active as a civilian vessel for two years. Okay, because I think that's a flex, saying that yeah. you got to, like, write the Queen Mary. Yeah. Okay. Valid. Yeah. But why did they dock it if it was so cool? Um, because September of 1939 marked the start of World War II. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With the start yeah, of World we War II. We all have II, it in our calendar. I do. I, do. I, I <laughs> yeah. think about World War II every single day. Every of my day. Life. Yeah. World War II honestly. is my yeah. Roman Empire. No, literally. <laughs> was it World War One or World War Two that was like the most gruesome? World War Two. Like, war. World War Two. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Humans are. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah. No, I agree with you, and you yeah. don't <laughs> You don't have to finish that sentence. And silence yeah. says everything. Yeah. With the start of the of World War Two, though, um, the Allied countries you know they needed all the support that they could get so Mm -hmm. um in terms of troop transportation the queen mary would be unmatched for that job um there (laughs) were there were a couple of other ships um that were taken alongside it its sister ship the queen elizabeth was also commissioned by the military um there's another ship called the normandy back during that time Mm -hmm. um that was also made to be a military ship but um the normandy did like catch fire and become decommissioned pretty early on in its service so really it was the queen mary that took all that uh, responsibility um the ship was docked it was taken to australia where it would be um stripped of all of its luxury amenities so no more ballroom no more library none of all that stuff um yeah. it was outfitted to be a warship it was getting ready to to be in war um it to be the fastest and largest out there essentially um it was yeah. painted a dark navy gray um and that and because of that it became known as the gray ghost Ooh. Um, yeah lots of ships like to call themselves the gray ghost but in my heart the queen mary is always the the, the primary ghost yeah 
<laughs> but yeah, no. Um, people like feared this ship, not necessarily because or, like the Axis powers. They feared the ship not because of like the damage it could cause. It never really had any like major guns or munitions or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just because of the amount of troops that it could get to and from places. So, um, like even, even Hitler at that time, he like put out a huge reward, um, a huge reward. And like, he said that any U-boat captain who managed to sink the Queen Mary would immediately be honored with like one of the highest like ranks in the military at that time. Um, it was that important to sink the ship. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm yeah. so glad they didn't sink it. No, seriously, that yeah. would have been terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, on on one trip in 1943, the ship managed to carry 16,683 people on a trip. Oh. Whoa. Oh Which still to lot. this day stands as the record for the most people ever carried on a ship. Damn, dude, that's so. crazy. Yeah, they were packed in there, and like I'm pretty sure you. Then you can definitely find pictures from back during that time. Oh yeah, of like for sure. these sailors, all these soldiers, just crammed onto the deck of the ship. A um, time of evil. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but the the Queen Mary's military service is really where the paranormal does come into play. Um, mm-hmm. That's why I did preface it with this history. Um, Not fair. The war was gruesome, as we know. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Not just for the troops on the battlefield, but at times even for the troops on and sailing alongside the Queen Mary. Um, lots of accidents, lots of damage during that war, uh, deaths from attacks by U-boats or from, um, you know, artillery or even defire from other ships on the waters um like i mentioned it was a huge target everyone wanted this ship sunk and they fought like hell to sink it so lots of damage uh the queen mary incurred lots of damage during its time yeah i'm sure Uh, yeah but in what's considered to be one of like the most devastating accidents for the queen mary and really any ocean liner um is what happened on October 2nd, 1942. Uh, the Queen Mary was just going pretty fast through the waters, trying to transport some troops back. Um, and it managed to actually slice right through an Allied cruiser escort ship that was Ooh. sailing alongside it called no. the HMS. Oh, yeah. I remember this. How do you <laughs> act? Ah, there you go. There we go. <laughs> now, at least you got it. Remember. <laughs> there we go. That's the, um, that's right. an accident that I would. That how is that an accident? So the thing is, th- this was a tiny light cruiser, and um, it was a lot faster than the Queen Mary was, and so it was going. Um, it, it 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 was traveling in front of the Queen Mary to escort it. Um. They were both ships were under orders to be constantly zigzagging through the waters in order to avoid U boats under. Um, but the captain of the Curacao like severely underestimated the speed of the Queen Mary. Ooh. So the Queen Mary caught up to it a little too fast, managed to hit it, and of course, Queen Mary just had to slice right through and it yeah. can just continue right through that ship. Yeah. Sorry, because the most powerful ship at the time is believed to not be fast enough yeah (laughs) yeah no it it was it was crazy it was one of the fastest at that time but because like it was so big it was just unseen of unheard of before so a little estimated um but yeah the the queen mary had a fractured stem which is the very front part of like the ship's bow so the the frontmost part of it so there was damage to the ship um so it was under direct orders to not stop under any circumstances due to the threat of the U-boats attacking them. Oh. Um, so the Queen Mary had to just continue on, plow right through all of the wreckage of that ship, as well as all of the people in that ship as well. Um, so Queen Mary continued on. Uh, they got left the- behind? Yep. Yeah. The... 
the Queen Mary had to continue on, leaving the 437 members of the Curacao stranded in the water. Do you know um, if they survived? I don't think they did. Only 99 of them were rescued. Ooh. The, the other 338 had lost their lives um, in that accident. Um, so it's actually said, though, that a lot of them were killed by the massive propeller of the Queen Mary slicing right through them. Because Ooh, the ship no. had to just pass right through. Um, have any of you guys been on the Queen Mary before? No. Mm -hmm. No, not so, yeah. yet. Sure, I think. So yeah, I've gone on tours or gone through the house, and one of the rooms—I'm not sure if you still can—but you know, when I was younger, at least, um, you would go through the propeller room, yeah. and that propeller is gargantuan. Like it is, it is bigger than you're even imagining in your head right now. It, it has is to. huge. Um, okay, how big do you guys think the Titanic was? Uh, like a like pretty big ship, like how, what are you yeah. picturing in your head? Yeah, like pretty like I'd say a little bit bigger than medium sized. I'd, I yeah, I assume it's like there's like an apartment building right next to me that's around like three stories. I'm assuming it's like like tall, like, like it's yeah, like about stories. like tall as like two of them. Yeah, I'm assuming. Like yeah, two, so three buildings. the Queen Mary is like three times the size of the Titanic. It's Oh my god. It's a, it's a huge ship. Um I know nothing. It's, ah. a, it's a huge ship. Yeah. And that propeller in the back is giant. I still will never get over the fact of that thing. Um so you get to go down into the propeller room and from what I remember, I'm just going purely off memory here. Um you can walk on the platform that's essentially like suspended in the air that's surrounding the propeller. It gives it enough space so the propeller can freely move if it ever were to. But there's a platform with a railing and you can literally look over the railing into the water that the propeller and the ship is sitting in. Um, Damn. It's, it's a pretty crazy sight. And that propeller room is considered to be, I think, the most haunted area of the ship. Because if it, if it killed yeah. that many people by accident, exactly. I wouldn't doubt. Exactly. It. You know, because of, of all that, the people that it killed. Um, it said that, like, you can still hear the screams of the soldiers from in that room. Um, you can, you know, feel them presences. You can see them lurking in the shadows. Um, definitely, when I was there, it's it's such a heavy feeling. Um and really, I'm not one to to say that. I guess, like even even where we work, uh, I don't even really get the heaviest of feelings there at times. No, um, yeah. But you know, just going off from what I remember as a kid, like it was it was bad. Um, it was bad. I I would go through there. Um, I, there's this one distinct time I will always remember it. Um, and I have a shit memory um, of my childhood. But I was walking around the <laughs> ship. With, I was walking around the ship with my mom. We went all the way up to the top, like outside deck of the ship, which is an awesome view. It's a very beautiful view of Long Beach, as as pretty as Long Beach can be, I guess. Um, <laughs> but there's also still like anti, um, like anti aircraft weaponry up on the deck. That they still have so like the big guns that would lock on to the yeah. planes to, to take them down and yeah. we were walking on on the deck and we are close to one of those artillery guns and i like almost like fully shut down just like in a sense of like internal like panic and anxiety mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i turned to my mom like i didn't know what it was but it just felt like one of it felt like the worst thing i had ever felt at that point I turned to my mom and I was like, mom, like on the brink of tears. I was like, mom, I need to get off of this ship. Like I need to get out of here. I, I can't be here anymore. Um, so we rushed off of the ship. Um, we got back down onto the floor and I immediately felt so much better just being off of it. Um, mm -hmm. and like, I don't know, you guys know me. I'm, I'm pretty big skeptic. Uh, not that like, big. Like I would, skeptic, I would, I know, I would say I believe, help but it's like, I would say I believe, but it's not like I I actually think that there's ghosts everywhere. Exactly. I and, fair. 
I don't know. Like, of course, me being me now, I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. That was just whatever, whatever. But like, I don't know. I, I will never forget the way that I felt while I was up on that ship. Um, so that's something that's always kind of stuck with me. And that's really the main yeah. thing what I say when like that was my first experience with the paranormal. Um, but yeah, there's as you walk down through the like under kind of bowels of the ship with the propeller room, with the engine, the boiler room. Um, there's that's where a lot of those presences really can be felt. Um, there's in the boiler room specifically, uh, there's one of the doors. Um, you guys have been on the like USS Hornet, so yeah, you yeah. know that sure, yeah. That, yeah okay well yeah oh, we're like, my little hazard. oh yeah, 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 yeah 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 anyway you guys know that with, no like, i have totally like, yeah i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> you know okay know. like so for anyone who doesn't know okay i guess on like big ships mainly like military ships or military fitted yeah. ships um as you go through the ho- the corridors of them there will be very heavy doors that will close and you can really get them closed and those doors are there to section off areas of the ship if they in case they flood um yeah so like in yeah. case yeah. of a flood those heavy doors will be shut tight and yeah. you run as far away as possible if you are caught trapped inside of that room when it was flooding well you're, you're shit out of luck um yeah. sorry about that <laughs> but yeah no but there's yeah there's these literally. yeah there's these heavy ass doors like that section off parts of the queen mary and um in the boiler room there's actually a story that uh there's a heavy door that one day one of the uh, the staff members, one of the soldiers who is down there was working in that boiler room um, when the Queen Mary kind of hit like a big wave. It lurched the ship off a bit. He was standing in the doorway of that heavy door. It oh. slammed shut and crushed yeah. him. Oh. Um, oh, yeah, I've heard about that one. Yeah. And so that. it's actually said that you can still see him at times, you know, peeking around from this doorway or um, reaching out from the doorway for any help that he can have on this Aww. ship. Yeah, you can hear, you know, his cries and also just the screams of the other, um, you know, sil- soldiers and people that were yeah. there. Um, I, I don't know. I think out of any place I've been so far, again, I haven't been there in a long time, so going off memory here, but like those lower parts of the ship have just such a crazy feeling to them it's in a way it's sort of like being in the like the sick bay of the uss hornet if you guys know what i'm talking about yeah i know what you're talking about yeah um especially like the burn room and stuff yeah it's like you can just feel like this is this is where people died and it's like really that's such i didn't feel anything there really no oh i don't i guess we just have to go back because like i don't think it was like a a feeling of like Uh, anything paranormal but just like dude people like died here you know yeah yeah it wasn't paranormal room but Hmm. yeah i just saw it as a room i was fine valid Uh, i guess we'll have to go back yeah 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 Yeah. um but the thing is a lot um after the war um in after the war ended in 1945 the the queen mary did um did get docked again it was essentially pardoned by the military thanked for its service it was uh retrofitted back to its you know luxury cl- cruise liner status it was repaired it was repainted to be a bright colorful cruise ship um and in 1947 it was opened up again for civilian use um hey, so it did yeah what do you mean it was pardoned well like in, not it, necessarily pardoned it was just like it was like you know like thank you for your service yeah. you know okay, yeah. okay. okay. discharge like, okay discharge from service yeah discharge is what i mean yeah okay um yeah it was discharged from service um essentially it was Turned back into its cruise line status. Um, 
yeah, 1947, it opened up for tours yet again. Um, not tours. <laughs> <laughs> um, for voyages, I guess, on the water. Um, passenger service, so it was retrofitted. It was opened up to civilians again. Um, now, actually, though, most of the the deaths that happened on the Queen Mary are not said to have happened from the war, though. They're said to have just been from, I guess, lots of natural causes. Um, so, like, yeah, okay. natural causes, causes like like illnesses, um, okay. illnesses mainly that were happened on the ship because it would be on a trip for like weeks or months at a time, and if you got sick back during that time and you couldn't get the proper yeah. treatment, well. You know, you were, you were done. Yeah. You were done for, um, even, even with the hospital that they had on board, it it was still small. It wasn't like fully equipped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's also another story that, um, while it was, I guess, still, um, a, a warship during its time. Um, so still during the war, um, on December 11th, um, the ship was like just randomly just like broadsided. It was just smacked by a huge rogue wave that hit the ship. Um, it said that that wave reached the height of about 92 feet. Oh um, which is an insanely oh, big wave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that wave, um, I'm pretty sure that's the wave that uh managed to, you know, knock that heavy door crushing that soldier down in the boiler room. Mm. Um and so this was an account. It also caused lots of damage to the ship and uh, almost capsized it. So there was oh, damn. lots of panic. There was definitely lots of injury. Um, there's no, like, I guess, recorded deaths of it, but uh, there almost certainly was deaths that happened from yeah. That, yeah. that wave. I oh, am yeah. sure. It's actually calculated that the ship rolled about 52 degrees um, and oh it God. completely capsized if it rolled another three degrees. Holy oh, no. scary, dude. And this is a big ship. This is a mm-hmm. huge ship, yes. Huge. It was carrying it was carrying over eleven thousand people on it at that time, also. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh my god. All the damage that happened. But yeah, because of the deaths from the soldiers, the deaths from people that were on the ship, um, there's lots of, you know, reports of, of hauntings of spirits still on there. Um, you know, ever since it's, it's permanent docking in Long Beach after it was retired, um, and then turned into the hotel that it is currently, um, the a lot of these paranormal claims sort of began around the 1980s or so. A lot of people think that maybe it was done to just like you know increase the popularity or yeah. um, to it's bring a... in more business. Yeah, but yeah, um, it's been included in you know top ten haunted places in the world, things like that. Um, let's see, one of the biggest stories. Um, is that there's the most haunted room, and it's kind of funny oh, because yeah. there's always got to be a most haunted room most haunted. in a haunted yeah. area. Would um, there be like a mid haunted room? <laughs> I'd, stay, I'd stay in that one, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so the haunted room is the is B three forty. Um, that's one of the rooms on the ship. Um, it was closed off for years, but I think recently the ship opened up again um, and because they were doing some renovations. And you can actually book the B- room B340 to spend the night in um, if you want. Yeah. But oh it's, always, it's always booked out like so far in advance. Yeah, I so bet. I though. assume so. Okay, um, yeah. so uh, time to book it. <laughs> exactly. I'm so Yeah, done. for like 20, 30. No, same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Do you know if it reopened 
Because I know during the pandemic, it also closed yep. down. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, just... yeah, during the pandemic, the ship closed down for business reasons, and it stayed closed a little while because um, the ship was actually slowly sinking. There was too much weight on it. So mm-hmm. okay. they had to remove some of the original, like, escape boats off of the oh. ship just to let lighten it. Like, um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, reo- it reopened, I think, at the end of 2022 or start of 2023. Yeah. So pretty recently. Um, Shaq did a DJ set there last year or a couple oh, years ago. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> DJ okay, Diesel. Quick. What did you say the room number was? Shaq is a DJ, yeah. Thank <laughs> DJ Diesel, yeah, B340. Um, yeah, it's considered to be the most haunted room. Um, it's to say that, you know, th- there's been reports of, um, you know, lots of, like, creaky floorboards, faucets turning on. Um, there's said that there was lots of, like, there was deaths, like, murders that happened in that room. Um, Throughout the ship, there's stories of a girl drowning in one of the pools that's there. And so um, that pool is closed off for just public access. But I know on like some of the guided tours, you can go into those areas and take a look around. Okay. And the the energy is always so off. Um, yeah, so room B340 apparently is haunted by the spirit of someone who was murdered in that room. Um, and so you'll see people say they'll wake up in the middle of the night to see someone, you know, standing at the edge of their bed or sitting in the chair in the corner um, or making noise. Um, mm-hmm. I did mention that sometimes like faucets will turn on and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um I've, of course, stay, spent the night at the Queen Mary. I've got in hotel rooms when I was younger there. I remember one night I was there with, like, my my mom, my stepdad, my at the time, my brother, and maybe my, like, step, stepsister at the time also. Um, I think stepdad, brother, and stepsister were, like, going around, just walking around. Mm-hmm. My mom and I were in the, the hotel room because it was kind of scary, or at least I was scared. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, the this the faucet in the bathroom definitely turned on by itself and that freaked me the fuck out i bet dude <laughs> that freaked me the fuck out as a kid no it was actually insane um and i think the the like something happened with the tv i'm not sure i remember it properly but i think the tv like managed to turn on by itself or something and that scared the hell out of me also so i was like clinging to my mom for dear life in that hotel <laughs> room yeah um <laughs> yeah um there's also one time when i was there it might have been that same trip we might have stayed there for a couple nights but it's kind of funny it was the group of us so me and my mom stepdad stepsister brother we all were being uh naughty guests and we <laughs> decided to go explore the ship on our own so not we not. like went through doors, we went through ropes where we shouldn't have been just exploring different my parts god. of the ship. Oh my god, um, you are literally the guest that we hate. I <laughs> yeah. love that though. And also <laughs> low-key a little dangerous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. How dangerous 100%. can it be? I mean, of no, course, like dangerous. we we couldn't get down to like the lower, more dangerous levels, but like we got to like the big open areas um, that weren't in use because yeah. they were more of like the haunted areas. Like we got to like the pool area that's usually closed off, um, and eventually, like I-, I was terrified. I was ready to you know shit my pants. Um, yeah, <laughs> like they dragged and me with them. I'm like, live a little, go for it. They dragged me with them. I did not want to be there, but uh-huh. um, they made me come with. And eventually we were caught by one of like the janitors. Oh my <laughs> that, God, what happened? That work there. You deserve that. <laughs> yep. But she was Probably like this, thing. like, she was like this older, like, I think Hispanic lady or something. Uh-huh. Or, or no, she was just like an older <laughs> woman. Yeah. and okay. And we were like, like oh sorry like we didn't know we were supposed to be here like we got lost can you lead us back to where we're supposed to go uh-huh. and she was like being her being the sweet lady she was she was like yeah of course and she just led us back to safety um yeah nothing happened to us thankfully but that was you a get blacklisted 
scary, if not fun presence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at least not that I know of. <laughs> um, maybe <laughs> no, we I did, know. but I don't think I did. <laughs> um, we try to go back and there's a, <laughs> they got like a <laughs> I had like a photo of you when you were a baby. Yeah, we, yeah we exactly. <laughs> They're like, no, we Only don't. one way we to play it out. <laughs> I'm going to call to make a reservation. I'm like, hey, I'd like to reserve room B340. Also, how do I okay. know if our friend is blacklisted? <laughs> yeah, his name is, um, uh, I'm not dosking myself, but. No, no, you're good, you're good. is <laughs> this. <laughs> um, no, yeah, okay. there's. I guess a lot of like the stories are kind of anecdotal also, and especially just for me drawing from my own experience, because there's no like recorded, like proven well, yeah. cases of, of any paranormal activity at the Queen Mary. Yeah. Um, I know uh, I I was doing, when I was doing research, I came across, of course, some like, um, like Reddit yeah, posts probably. from, no, no, no. I like Reddit posts of people okay. who work there, people who like would tour a lot. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned the pool. Uh, this person like on Reddit said that they were uh, viewing the swimming pool and they were startled to see some shadow figures like actually diving into the water. Um, what? Like at a height where the diving it. board would be. Exactly. <laughs> or... Um, or that, like, just going into certain rooms um, would just instantly, like, drain their battery. Um, and I think that's something similar that kind of what happened to me as well. Um, but, yeah, uh, it, there's reports of, you know, going through areas and feeling lots of, um, like, dizziness, vertigo, um, disorientation. Um, like, things that are very intense, especially down in the, the darker, like, work areas of the ship. Um, but yeah, it's it, the the energy that like I remember feeling from the Queen Mary is just it's nothing like what I've felt like anything I felt ever since then. So um, definitely somewhere that we need to all go as a group to to take a tour of. I would be more than glad to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, that was aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, yeah, yeah, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going. <laughs> um, it's kind of fun, though, because, like, for some of the hotel rooms you go in, like, some of them are below the water level, so your window, like, looks out into the water, oh, which is wow. cool. Right. Um, not sure. I don't know if they swim really that close, but, oh, like... So. Like the engine room, <laughs> the engine room in the lower parts are like fifty feet below the water, um, which is is really cool to be in. Yeah, That's the point. Um, I do want to kind of point out that the uh, the the door that crushed the the people, uh, the yeah. person, is actually called Door Thirteen, which I think mm -hmm. is kind of. Fun. Oh, yeah. 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 that's why Lucky I was like, Lucky oh. number thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> All faithful. Yeah. Anyway, that's the the story, the history of the Queen Mary. Uh, sorry if it wasn't as paranormal forward as no, I know that's it. right. Expected, but yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. I like it. Cool. Yeah, I loved it. Now we have a re now we have more of a reason to go. Yeah. Well. I guess it's time for me. Who's to next? Talk. Yeah, is, is it nice? you? Yeah. Go it's, ahead, it's, Alexis. Share with us what you have. Alexis. Uh, okay. <laughs> Alexis, don't care. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> everyone knows this. You guys know this? I just don't know. Salud? Don't, don't mind me. I'm just, I'm just, uh, okay. Okay, I'm okay. 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 Don't do that. Okay. Yo, yo, so, yo, yo. Oh, keep uh, keep keep it to yourself. Oh. I know, don't oh, um, self incrimination. Um, so, some of us are still stigma. recovering. Okay. Oh, Whoa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. I was just. I, I'm sorry. I had turned off my mic to sneeze, and I'm a very aggressive sniffer. God. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> you are good. So, um, we're not we're not really going anywhere. 
Not really. Um, okay. We're just. Uh, do you not have a I'm story just... for us? No, I do. Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Duh. Okay. But it's more about a person than it is a place. We all know this person. Wait. This person. Uh, Hold on, Mother Ever. And we've heard about this person since we were no. little in elementary. Oh. oh, maybe I haven't. The Tooth Fairy? Um, Yo, you Santa know, Claus. Speaking of the Tooth Fairy, one time I wrote an, an, uh, like a letter to the Tooth Fairy and it's on my pillow. And then like 10 years later, I found the letter. And I was like, Damn. dude, Tooth Fairy? <laughs> <laughs> okay anyways okay whatever i spoiled the tooth fairy for myself when i was a kid i was like too smart for my own good and i was like oh i think they're my parents and so i did like a little <laughs> test of like putting my teeth under my pillow versus not i forget exactly what i did but like after i was like yeah no i know it's you guys like i, <laughs> I just ruined I, the I, tooth. Know I know it's you for the tooth fairy <laughs> as well <laughs> okay well that's the thing the tooth fairy. You guys are freaking crazy. What? Believing in freaking tooth fairy. It's well, tooth I was mouse. like four. Yeah, I believed a in mouse the tooth fairy. Mouse is the one that takes your believe. teeth, not a fairy. Oh. We all know the it's a mouse living in the walls. Yeah, it's el ratón de los dientes. He shows up, he takes your teeth, and he leaves the coin behind. You know who else showed up somewhere? Amelia Earhart. That's who I'm talking about today. Oh! oh. <laughs> well, when she showed up, she was like, disappeared. Yeah, well, yeah, she did. She had to show up. <laughs> Mama. Yeah. Anyways, so okay. that's my case for today. We're talking about Amelia Earhart. Thank you yeah. for sharing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm done. She that's flew it. a plane <laughs> and she disappeared. But you just spoiled my whole thing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Everyone knows. <laughs> Everyone knows Amelia Earhart. You know, it's like what if I don't different... know who Amelia Earhart is? Yeah. What if they're just learning about her in school? I'm just gonna right, kill myself. Stop. Yeah, okay, yeah, continue, 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 continue. Go, yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> tell tell me everything you know about Amelia Earhart. Thank yeah, you, my love. Thank you. Okay. So she was born Amelia Mary Earhart, July 24th, 1897. Close to us, Milo. I was about to um, say, I was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was born in Atchison, Kansas. And um, she was uh, an American aviation pioneer. She was actually the first female pilot to circumnavigate the globe by the time that she had disappeared as well. Um, she disappeared over the Pacific Ocean on July 2nd, 1937. But I do want to go over a little, about, a little bit about who she was and what exactly happened. So um, Era and her family, they were living in Atchison, Kansas, and she grew up very adventurous and independent. So <laughs> she already knew she had a, a feature in something when it had to do with something Hell outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Does, there, does she remind you of anyone you know, Alexis? I want to say something so bad, but I'm not going to say it on the podcast. No. Oh, I was going to say you. Type it. Type it. Me? Oh, Type that's it. cute. Um, okay. Type it. I typed it. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to say that on the podcast? <laughs> I just don't want to be... With what I've Anyways. drawn. <laughs> Nobody can see what you've drawn. I, don't I hope they can't see. I don't think they can. No, they will we'll find, out. <laughs> but, um, find out. She was living with her family. Her parents, unfortunately, had passed. And after their, or not her parents, but her grandparents, sorry. Um, her grandparents had passed. And after they did pass away, the family had struggled financially. Um, just because of the fact that her father was a huge alcoholic. So they ended up having to move. And they moved Pretty often, um, Earhart ended up completing high school in Chicago in 1916. And she attended, I don't know how to pronounce this school's name, Ogunst. Ogunst. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Let me, let me send it in the chat. That's, it's in the chat. Oh, Ogunst? Yeah, Ogunst. That's what I just said. But I don't know if it's like emphasis on the Z. But... In Rydall, Pennsylvania, um, 
She attended after her mother received inheritance. And later on, Earhart was uh, actually visiting her sister in Canada, funnily enough. And she, well, while she was in Canada, she realized that she cared so much about wanting to help people, specifically wounded soldiers um, in World War I. So she left junior college to become a nurse's aide in Toronto for, um, it was actually two years later after she enrolled in school. And she entered a pre-med program after the war in New York City at Columbia University. But she left in 1920 um, for California to see her parents. And that was her first time actually taking an airplane ride. And oh, cool. yeah, so she... This this airplane ride actually changed her life because this this is what led her to then start taking flying lessons. A year later into taking flying lessons in 1921, Earhart bought her first plane, which was a Kinner Airster, and she you even know earned... how much she bought it for. Girl, no, I don't. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were the story. You said she bought a plane. I say for how much? I'm so sorry, me. I don't have. I don't have the I don't have the amount she bought it for. A couple What's doubloons. Um, a doubloons, <laughs> yeah. She, she, she bought it with money, but um, it was a Kinner Airster. I'll tell you the type of plane she bought, and she did earn her pilot's license two years later. Ooh. Honestly, that's pretty. I don't nice. know. That's kind of Sick. impressive to me. Yeah, yeah. When I was younger, I wanted to get a pilot's license. I don't know. I thought it'd be cool. Oh yeah. That'd but be, like to yeah. fly like helicopters rather than planes. Oh, oh. I'm more that's... of a boat person. Yeah, we know. We know, yeah. Mr. Muscle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, during her life, she became very passionate about women's rights as well as like celebrity culture. Um, she, like I said, was the first female aviator to fly across. Um, she even flew across the. Atlantic Ocean alone, and she set so many other achievements and records. I could go into them, um, but I, no as way. lovely as they are, you know, I don't think I'm going to right now. Um, okay. Maybe later on, but I do want to go uh, over a little bit about the fact that, you know, all of us uh, knew about her disappearance. You know, I, like I said, yeah. I don't know about you guys. I learned about Amelia Earhart when I was in elementary school. Yeah. yeah. The world's biggest mystery. Um, I mean, <laughs> one of them. I would say, oh my one God. Of them. One of them. Yeah. Yeah. I said, yeah. Okay. Well, um, Amelia Earhart took flight in her twin engine Lockheed Electra around the world alongside her navigator, Fred Noonan, in 1937. They began their journey on June 1st. They departed from Miami and they headed west and they would continue to fly, uh, making some stops along the way to refuel until they would reach Ley, New, New Guinea on June 29th. They At that point, they had already traveled 22,000 miles. And then from there, they decided to leave Ley and they headed for Howland Island on July 2nd, which from that point was approximately 2,600 miles away. So it was doable compared to the 22,000s that they did before. Okay, yeah. Um, and Earhart actually had an intermittent radio contact with... Um, a U.S. Coast Guard cutter, Itasca, I think is what oh, it's called. I, I love cutters. Um, <laughs> um, Itasca yeah. had actually received calls from Earhart. He, they received one about an hour after she departed, and her last known words were, quote, we are running north and south, end quote. And so after this, there was... I'm not entirely sure when they found out that she was missing or, or like what led them to believe that she was missing, but they ended up having a search organized to find Noonan and Earhart. Um, but the operation came to an end after they were both declared lost at sea. Oh, people, 
from all over the world wanted to know what happened to them. Um, and so a lot of people, because of the fact that there were no answers, they just came up with their own. So I am going <laughs> to go course. a little bit. Isn't about that what we always do? Yes. Yeah, of course. I'm going to go over the conspiracy theories on Amelia. Yeah. And so I was originally just going to kind of do what Kai did, go over like a history lesson on Amelia Earhart, which I still could, but I think I would do it probably that for another episode. Um, for now. Listeners, just... write in. Do you want us to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want Alexis to give us a history lesson? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm, maybe, I I'll, maybe I'll add in a couple more ghost stories from the Queen Mary also. Mm-hmm. Oh. mm-hmm. That'd be cool. A little bonus content. Yeah. Maybe I'll just make funny little witty <laughs> comments <laughs> as I... <laughs> Yeah, we can just take like an extra like 15 minutes or so just to go over like a little more info. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't let us know, we won't do it because we won't know. Yeah, give us engagement. We don't please. have a Patreon. <laughs> I'll let you know. Us if we would right now. No, we would not. Okay. My mom would subscribe. Um, no, she wouldn't. <laughs> My mom wants to listen to the podcast and I'm not letting her. I'm sorry. Why? We could, we could do like a dollar fifty a month. I, think I, I feel like that. it's more like a Kofi. I think you're looking. No, no. no. Like the Kofi. the question is, what would we give them? <laughs> That's why I think um, it would rather much drugs. be more efficient to do a Kofi because oh. a Kofi is like, oh, it's like you don't give anything back most of the time. True. Or we could do like a, uh, like, like we could do like logs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> We'll just send selfies. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can start interacting with us so we can yeah. interact mm-hmm. with you listeners. Don't interact yeah, so, with me. All right, let's go. All right. I'm in the <laughs> yeah. Um, so Amelia Earhart, I, I, I tried to, well, I don't do the math. I think it's 87 years since she's been missing. Oh, um, okay. She's still quite there. a long time. <laughs> There was like, yeah. okay, this isn't this isn't a part of the conspiracy theories that I'm going to share, but I'm going to share it anyways. Um, I saw this on like Instagram or something, but there was like at one point where it was blowing up on I think TikTok about like what was it, snow crabs or something? Uh, coconut, crabs. Yeah. coconut crabs, coconut crabs. crabs. That's, That's what it was. What? It was yeah, yeah. There was crabs. a there was a conspiracy theory that uh, Amelia Earhart's body body was on an island and that coconut crabs were eating her. So that's why there was no body found and blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. Well, well, the theory the theory is that um, her and um, her partner had like they had crashed onto the island or they got yeah somehow they landed on the island and they were like out of fuel and eventually I think they die of starvation and then the coconut yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat exactly. her body mm-hmm. and therefore there's no body left. So yeah. instead of them eating the coconut crabs, the coconut crabs ate them. Yes. Well, have you ever seen a coconut crab? <laughs> no, I have Dude, not seen a coconut crab. Huge. No, They're those massive. things are huge. They are giant. Yeah. They are huge. See, oh where there's God. a will, there's a way. Uh, I oh, they're big. Be- That's a lot <laughs> yeah, of meat. That yeah. is a lot of meat. <laughs> Sorry, Probably not I'm a thinking- lot of meat, but a lot of shell. You can still try. Anyways. Anyway, Alexis. <laughs> yeah, Alexis, yeah, keep going. That's- that's a, that's a conspiracy yeah. theory that I heard about. Like that's like one of the ones that I knew about first, I guess. But um, so <laughs> I'm gonna be sharing about five for today. There's I'm sure there's one. a lot. What? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Is that what like theory number one, or are we now no, getting no, no, like no? Now we're getting so there's into six the- in total. So six in total, I guess. Yeah. Okay, number one, um, coconut crabs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing six conspiracy theories for today. Um, I already went for the first one. Um, this next one, it involves kind of the same thing. Most of these conspiracy theories start off with the same thing usually. Um, coconut crabs? This, yeah, All there's right, coconut crabs in each and every single one of them. But... <laughs> 
There was a theory that Earhart had crashed and sunk into the ocean and drowned. So theories say that she ran out of fuel, was trying to find the Howland Island, and that um, and she she had actually called the Atasca, the cutter that I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, they received many calls by not only Earhart but Noonan, saying that they were they were low on fuel and they were struggling to find the island. Um, so. The president at the time authorized a $4 million rescue, but when they performed this, they found no trace of the aircraft, Noonan, or Earhart. So that theory wasn't necessarily something that was proven to be true. Um, there is another that some believe she crashed and landed while um, safely. So she landed safely, is this theory, but on the wrong island. So again, is when it becomes like she was low on fuel. And when people Mm. are low on fuel in a plane, there's only two results. You either crash or you land. And so (laughs) the International Historic Recovery Group. I'm sorry. (laughs) As you're saying that, I'm like, are you sure? (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) The International Historic Aircraft Recovery Group had believed that instead of landing on the Howland Island, Earhart had landed on the Gardner Island. But at that point, they didn't, they hadn't found, again, at that point, they hadn't found the plane. So it was not necessarily actually taken seriously. Um, some people don't believe either. People actually believe that Earhart was captured and taken prisoner by the Japanese. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this photo that was found in the National Archives, and it's a photo of this man and a woman, and they're sitting next to or on the dock, and the man and the woman they kind of resemble Earhart and Noonan. It shows them in the Marshall Islands sitting on a dock, like I said. Um and the theory is that they didn't crash, but they landed in the Marshall Islands and were taken prisoner by the Japanese. There was actually a retired government investigator, Les Kinney, who told NBC News that the photo, quote, clearly indicates that Earhart was captured by the Japanese, end quote, even though the Japanese authorities had no record of Earhart ever being in custody or anything like that. So... That was essentially proven wrong, I guess. And then this one is probably my favorite. Um, she was a spy. She was a spy. Okay. <laughs> so not only was oh, yeah. this girl a Wait. darling pilot. What? Was, the, was Amelia Earhart a spy or was that her cover up? <laughs> I don't know. What? It's like spyception. What? 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 I'm gonna. This is like tenant. This is like really mind boggling. Keep going. The so she was just a normal pilot, but beneath she was a government agent. Um, The author of Lost Star, Randall Brink, actually kind of talks about the theory a little bit and how she never intended to fly to Howard Island or Howland Island. Um, She was actually (laughs) going on a mission to document things that were going on on the Japanese island installations for the U.S. government. And when they were detected by the Japanese, they were shot down and forced to land. So that's the theory as to what happened when it comes to that. I don't know. Like, I guess I can see it, but <laughs> I don't really see it. Don't I put, think it's like don't put so much up. thought. Like, okay. I, think, I think what really drove this theory is that there's a photo of her leaving the U.S. Embassy in London, and um, she's smiling. And so, so people are like, "Oh my God, she's a spy!" <laughs> but it's, I don't know. I don't know. God forbid somebody smile in a photo. Seriously. <laughs> Especially she's a woman also, during that time? Crazy. She's also kind of pretty. She's pretty. Sorry. Anyway. She is pretty. 
She's pretty. All right, um, we don't need you guys being gay for Amelia Earhart. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Please don't be mad at me. I'm mad at you. I can't remember what she looks like. Let me look up a picture of Amelia like, Earhart. She actually now. is pretty, in my opinion. I don't know. She just looks like a normal gal named Amelia Earhart. I don't know. But I like how you say a woman. she's actually pretty. She looks like a normal gal. You're not complimenting <laughs> her on anything. No, yeah, I would. She has a nice smile. Oh, well, there we I'm go. A, I'm a little bit too gay, I guess. <laughs> I'm a sucker for smiles. Okay, you anyways. There was a book published in 1970 called Am- Oopsies. <laughs> Amelia Earhart Lives <laughs> is what the book is called. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it basically just talks about- oopsies oh my-, <laughs> oh my god you muted me no okay. you are doing something I'm not doing anything other than speaking but this book basically just talks about the fact that this person believes that Earhart faked her death or yeah faked her death and Assumed another woman's identity. Because she was a spy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) So the author of the book, Joe Class. Joe Rogan. Oh, the clay. Okay. Oh my God, Joe Rogan. But he basically talks about how she survived the plane crash. Um, but used it as a way to kind of cover it. But that she was taken by the Japanese, and then she mm-hmm. was found and rescued by the U.S. forces, and then she was secretly, <laughs> like, taken away into New Jersey, and she assumed the identity of Irene Bolum, a housewife. Irene, uh, Karen talked to the media. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, Irene Bolum already yeah. existed. And she even filed a lawsuit. Good. She, was like, she was like, "No, I'm not Amelia Earhart," and so she denied the claims and filed a lawsuit on um, the author, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I would do the same thing if I were her. Anyways, if they um, showed up at your door and they're like Amelia, Amelia, and you're like, I'm "No, Alexa. actually." If people, no, no, no. If like the government came up to my door and was like, Amelia Earhart, is that you? I'd be like, yes, it is me. And then they would handcuff you. And they would take you off to a prison and you would never get to see Transylvania. Oh. Romania? Romania. I know. You would never get to see Romania. That's okay. That's okay. Why do you get so close to your mic? I don't me? know. No, <laughs> me? No, me. I think he was trying know. to make it sound like spooky and scary. No, like yeah, I was trying yeah. to scare no, her. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You'll never get to see <laughs> Romania. Well, that, no, it's okay. I don't have to see Romania. Okay. I've already seen Romania. Do, 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 I've been do. there, done that. Anyways. Yeah, those are all the conspiracy theories that I have. Um, I know recently, I think, I'm not entirely sure, uh, they found her plane, is what is being mm-hmm. claimed right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know? heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that there was some plane wreckage spotted. Um, it was, I think, I believe it was spotted by, like, the deep sea drone that they had put down there. So, like, in the ocean, crazy. I believe. 20,000 feet under. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I think that's different from the theory I heard, but there's a yeah. lot of theories out there. Yeah, there's a lot. The ocean there's is lot. crazy. Yeah, the ocean no, is the ocean big. Is no, like in, it was a while ago. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was like freshman year, I think. And I did like a, a present, like a deep, like research project, like a semester long research project on like deep ocean exploration. And it's crazy. Like at that time, I don't know now, but it was like only 30% of the ocean floor is actually mapped out. 
by us. And yeah, there's, there's still lot. so we much to seen. discover, and like it, no, it's just insane. The ocean is insane. I mean, when you can tell it's insane when you told your story of the Queen Mary, and how big was that wave again? Ninety-two feet. Yeah, I was like ninety something, <laughs> ninety-two feet. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, is that the story of Amelia Earhart and conspiracy theories? Yeah, that is the story of Amelia Hart and the conspiracy theories. Thank That's you it. for Thanks listening. For sharing. Thank you. I love coconut crabs. Yeah. <laughs> Have you They're seen anyway. spider crabs? Huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, spider crabs? I fucking love spider crabs. Don't even get me started, oh. man. Those things. <laughs> okay, you can see them at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. They're great. They're giant. You can. They, They're so they look- sick. You can touch, you can pet deep sea isopods at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Yeah, I didn't know there was spider crabs there, though. Yeah, there's spider no, crabs. They have, like there. A whole, they have like a whole deep sea section. Oh. And I remember when I first went there, I thought, oh man, those are some freaky statues. And then I get up close and I'm like, oh God, it's alive. Um, <laughs> I, think they're great. I think they're great. They're creepy. They've got like weird, long yeah, bodies. Japanese spider crabs are so weird. They're so yeah, cool. They're yeah. Yeah. You're, all right. Well, go ahead well, and take love, over. Take it away. Uh, yeah, Milo. Okay. Do you have a story okay. to share with I, the listeners? I do. With I do. us? I have a very, very quick story. Oh, that's fine. Um, a very, very stupid story. No, it'd all be right? fun. It's, Good way to end it. So where are you yeah. taking us? We're not taking uh, us. It's a, you know, it's a city with love. It's a city <laughs> oh. with, with love. With San Jose. Okay, I guess. No. San yeah, Francisco. No, 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 no. Paris. It's better, no, no. It's, better, it's better than all those places. It's better than Paris. Oklahoma. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not better than Paris, oh boy. Uh, so my, story is, my story is not going to be that long because the creature I'm talking about oh, is good, very oh, good. elusive. I'm going to be Lake talking Tahoe. about Nightcrawler. I'm talking oh, about Nightcrawler. Oh, Shut the fuck up. Let the man speak. Let's yeah. get <laughs> but I'm not talking about the X-Men Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. No, 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 I know. no, 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 no. I'm it's not talking true. about Nightcrawler, the 2014 movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal. No. I love that movie, though. <laughs> love that guy. I'm not talking about the Spirit Halloween animatronic circa 2020 Nightcrawler. No. That's not that. <laughs> oh. I'm Damn. talking about the Fresno Nightcrawler, one of the, in my personal oh. opinion, dumbest cryptids to bless the state of California. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It makes sense that it's in Fresno, dude. One of the yeah. dumbest cities to bless. Damn. <laughs> Shut <world>. up. <laughs> what? I'm Anybody from, like, next to Fresno, Fresno, bro. That place sucks. No, I, uh, no one's allowed to diss my lovely state of California. Oh, I was dissing Fresno. Like, specifically. No, 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 no. It might be you a shithole, but it's it. my shithole. <laughs> I'm actually sitting down. Um, <laughs> Anyways, can you? Yeah, I'm talking about the Fresno Nightcrawler. Cute. Oh, yeah. The legend starts in 2007. One day, a man yeah. named Jose noticed that his dogs were barking for seemingly no reason. Confused by their behavior, he decided to check his security cameras to see if anyone or anything had passed by. As he watched camera footage, he spotted two strange figures. They were small and pale, and honestly, they looked like a pair of pants. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Small pale things. Pants like creatures had walked through his backyard during the night. Shaken by this experience, Jose reported what he saw to local authorities. No yeah, way. That's it. No way, Jose. <laughs> he reported a pair of pants. Let me actually send you guys the video. That way you can see exactly what I'm okay. talking about. Did the authorities yeah. take it serious? It, of course. <laughs> I'll get to that. Okay, okay. Watch watch, Let's watch this video watch and, like and tell me. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think this is. Okay. Because it looks like a pair of pants to me. Wait, I th- wait, okay. I think I've seen this before. Yeah. 
Uh, it's probably yeah. the most <laughs> probably the most popular thing to come out of Fresno. It truly is. Uh, just a pair it's of a pants. that's a certified hood classic right there. <laughs> the grainiest, the grainiest of of C, uh, of of security camera footage. I would be scared too. Yeah. <laughs> the walking pair of pants, man. What I, year was this? Uh, 2007, uh, right? Seven. 2007. Yeah. That's when the first initial story of the Fresno Nightcrawler or Nightwalker, sometimes that's what people call it. <laughs> um, it appeared, really appeared, is appeared, a pair of pants. There have been sightings um, afterwards. There have been other you know, sightings. But is this um, the only like, like video of it? No, there's multiple videos. Uh, there's a video from Yosemite. That one looks a lot different. Then. It looks like there's like some type of head. You know that. That's what um, a lot of people that? have said. People w- when they um. No, there's a monster there's... from like. Oh, for some reason, it's it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> no, there, there's on. I'm still on the YouTube video, and one of the comments says, "That's why I keep my pants locked in a closet so they won't escape." <laughs> <laughs> no, the comments on that video are absolutely it's hilarious. Crazy. There's some other ones that I and absolutely love. From the video. It's the wrong uh, trousers, grommet. It reminds me of that monster in Monsters University. <laughs> oh, oh I know exactly what you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about, right? Yo, okay. that's what was seen. That's what it was. Um, no, yeah, there's other, there's been other it's sightings. Seen, but the uh, other video, it moves a lot slower. Okay, the Yosemite one just looks like a very skinny person walking, like, with their hands just pressed to their side. But is there something walking know. behind them, too? Like yeah, it looks like yeah. something. There's, like, a kid like or, like, a little dog or something is what it could be. I don't know. It's walking as slow as the thingies. You know what? It almost seems like someone put a sheet over them and only shows and their like legs. And like had stilts on. That's no, like... actually a theory. That's a theory that somebody is wearing stilts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it love like... that. Okay, what about the I'll... tiny one though? Like I'll... the tiny one is weird. A child. I'll get into it. Um... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're 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 truly everyone gangsta till the pants start walking. <laughs> You, you gotta tell okay. us why it's called a night crawler, though. Okay, okay. Can, yeah, continue, Molly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. There truly isn't a lot to say about the Fresno night crawler. It has yeah. only four air quotes sightings, end of air quotes oh, that have been caught on video. Um, please all other link examples. these videos in like a post, in like one of our posts or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll put them. I, the, yeah. The, the, the comments in the Yosemite video are so funny. No, they're hilarious <laughs> in both of the videos. <laughs> they they made me laugh. Really I would hard. hang out with them. They seem pretty chill. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them says tiptoeing in my Jordans. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. god! <laughs> Crying over this, it's a mama and her baby. Nature is beautiful. Heart emoji. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> But yeah, there, there's only been really around four sightings or four confirmed sightings, and all other ones have been debunked because um, it's been proven that the other videos have either been, you know, l- like puppets or somebody walking in a weird way with just, you know, wearing pants. Um, and like a lot of cryptids, there are different recounts of the original story and it leaves me with so many questions Mm -hmm. my initial description of the story is very very short because from Mm -hmm. there truly isn't that much information and a lot of things when you go over the articles talking about this a lot of them change things that happened in one story to the other like Mm -hmm. how i said oh it happened in his backyard but others say it happened in his front lawn God. Uh, yeah. Um. Sometimes the story is that Jose was awoken in the middle of the night by his dogs barking, and then others say that he woke up the, the next morning. He he could hear his dogs barking, and was like, "What? What are they barking at? I can't see anything. Let me go check." You know, footage from last night. Yeah. Others say that his brother. Like, that he had a brother. 
Um, and, you know, he got his brother up and they needed to go check out what was happening. And that some say that they immediately called local authorities and others say that he, like, the next morning went to, like, local news stations to talk <laughs> about it. It's very confusing. And they only ever talk about this guy as Jose. He doesn't have any last name. <laughs> what? This is, this is such no a way silly little case. He's just Jose. And I was searching so hard for an interview with Jose. And I found one that was deleted. It oh, was no. a podcast called Forever Fresno, where <laughs> this guy interviewed no. Jose. I could only read the description of it. This guy interviewed Jose. But the thing is, Jose would only speak in Spanish, even though he also knew English. <laughs> and so Jose Jose would translate or had to get his questions uh, or answers translated to another guy, but the other guy did not want to be, I think, in the same room. Oh, and so there's this weird game, apparently this weird game of telephone. And yeah. in the description, it talked about how Jose had mentioned Native Americans um, and how a Native American tribe had come into contact with him. And what that could mean i have i have no bloody idea this <laughs> the the mention of native americans and this being connected to a native american tribe has come up in other articles do they ever explain no no why would they do that doesn't what? make a whole lot of sense and then I tried really up and down to find the transcript or the audio for this. And I even so as far as took the risk of possibly downloading it only for it to oh give me god. a 404 um, no. message. Oh. oh my god. Virus now everything. installed on your computer. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> that's how they get it. That's how the mm-hmm. Fresno Nightcrawler comes and says <laughs> it. <laughs> Yo, it's it's aliens that steal your data. Oh my god. Where do we? Um, so yeah, I have so many questions. Uh, who the hell is Jose? Why is he <laughs> so bloody vague? And what the hell am I looking at? As we go down to Long Beach for the Queen Mary, let's make a stop in Fresno and yeah. try to figure out who this Jose is. <laughs> Track down Jose. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we're going to be like, do you know Jose? And they're like, what? <laughs> like who? <laughs> 17 like years five. later, we're going to try to Jose find Jose Night, Nightcrawler? Jose Nightwalker? <laughs> Nightcrawler, Jose. Um, so what are the Fresno Nightcrawlers? <sighs> Some people say they're aliens. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think... Some people was, say they're pants. Some people say they're <laughs> pants. Um, what do we? Jay, yeah. I know you mentioned that you, you thought you saw, like, a little head. There's been artistic uh, renditions of the Fresno Nightcrawler um, where they... Oh. People have done, I can't remember the word for it, but, you know, it's when you make footage a little bit clearer, analyzing mm-hmm. footage. And they're like, oh, the Fresno Nightcrawler, it's got, it's got eyes, it's got a head, and yeah. <laughs> Among it's us. A, it's a, yeah, that's kind of what you it can't looks see, like. But it's an, like, Milo is no, currently drawing it, the Nightcrawler. It's, a, it's no. Among Us. It's Among Us. I have, like, a I'm weird a question. Uh-huh. Does Fresno claim the Nightcrawler <laughs> as their cryptid, or they com- do they like not care they or deny it? Yeah. Okay, they do. They do. Some of them. No, yeah. Some some of the artistic renditions of them have gone pretty like creative. That it's um, it has like very tiny arms, like T Rex arms. That's, <laughs> That's cute. <clears throat> I would hang out with this guy. So Other... is it a per like a dinosaur? <laughs> no, no, this is not a dinosaur. I know, um, I know, but you're saying like how there's different renditions. Yeah, there's there's different renditions. Um, some say that it's a some 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 people classify this as an alien. Some people classify it under the paranormal of it actually being just like a severed like pair of pants just walking around. It's so weird. But those are That's usually so the funny. two main. Those are the usually the two main That's theories. So silly. 
it's either a ghost or it's an alien. Um, or a pair of I pants. love that. Or a pair of pants. Pair of pants. Yeah. But it truly, what it truly is, is just a creature. It's a creature. It is a creature. It's just oh, going to have uh, the creature as a pet. What? 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 Huh? What? What? Um, what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, Milo, keep going. So yeah, that's the Fresno Nightcrawler. Truly not a lot is known about the Fresno yeah. Nightcrawler. And I hope it stays that way. <laughs> you don't want to like I... rediscover the Nightcrawler? No. No. We're going to take you to Fresno so you can find the Nightcrawler. I would rather die. Maybe we'll see Jake Gyllenhaal there. I think as soon as he sees the exit to like Fresno, he will start fighting to get out of the car. I think he'll just <laughs> jump out of the car. I'll be the one driving immediately crash. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh man, Milo, now they're going to fix the car in Fresno. And we're going to uh-huh. spend the day there. <laughs> Uh, I a fate worse than well, one time I was driving back up to here from like Riverside and I got like 45 minutes out from Riverside and I got a flat tire like my tire like popped because I hit a pothole it was like the middle of the night so I had to spend the night and the next day in some like random ass city random ass town uh... in Southern California and I was just like, I forget even what it's called anymore. It was like Glendora, That's California, or something start. like that. And it was I've, like, it was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I've had a similar experience in my camping trip from oh hell. Oh, God. Well, it wasn't oh, that bad. bad. I, was, I was being dramatic. It wasn't that bad. We were in like, um, we were very, very um, up north, like on the border of Oregon. Me and my buddies, we were oh, trying shit. to go camping. And uh, <laughs> the car, while we were trying to get to the camping site, the car stalled. No. And we were like, that's not good. I was like, eh, we'll keep pushing. It'll probably be fine. And then it stalled again. And we were like, nope, we're going back. We go oh and see. <laughs> we spent like five hours trying to figure out what was wrong with it. And so we tried to go to the camping site again. We get hopelessly lost. And we're like, nope, let's go someplace else. <laughs> we try to go to the other campsite, but we're running low on gas, and we're not 100% sure we'll be able to make it, or Ooh. God forbid, how will we make it back the next morning? And so we're like, it's getting dark. You know what? We're going to call it a day. And we stayed, at this, we stayed at this horrible motel, that, and we couldn't close the blinds for the life of us. So oh there was just God. the windows were just open, just three dudes <laughs> <laughs> in the same bed. No, not in the same bed. <laughs> someone was in the couch. Someone else was who knows where. No, there was there's two beds. Um, uh, okay, that's cool. it. That's the end of my the Fresno my camping story. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. That was the end of the Fresno Nightcrawler. I. I I love this. I love this thing. I think whatever it is, I don't think it's an alien. I don't Wait, think it's please, a please keep your drawings up as well. We could use, if you'd like, we could use these as the pictures for the Nightcrawler. Yeah, literally. <laughs> just, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, to us. my shitty, shitty drawing. All of them. The all coconut them. crabs great. too and the spider crab. And... I, yeah. I, changed, I made two versions oh good. So of, good. Of, the, of the skepticism one. <laughs> so, we, we might have to start commissioning Milo to like draw things for so our episode. Good. And then, um, I love your art style. So fun. This was funny. <laughs> um, and then, right. of course, I'm very yes. proud of this one. That Woo! one looks so good. <laughs> cool. Also, I yeah. love how we all have like a school uniform. Well, it's because it's, it's based great. on those seventy photos of. Um... No, that's great. I don't mind oh, it at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Milo, please send them all to us. Yeah. You get to see my shitty well, art. Okay. First also, oh, guest episode really completed. Yeah, that's awesome. I think Milo set a high standard for every. No, I didn't. Guest. We're gonna be yeah, expecting you're, you're art from guest. all the other guests now. Yes. That's fucked up. <laughs> You're <scoring people. laughs> No, I'm joking, but 
Thank um, you for coming on. Yeah. I think the Fresno Nightcrawler is a deer. <laughs> or it's faked. I love the Fresno Nightcrawler. I would love for the Fresno Nightcrawler to make a comeback. It, it came back in 2020. Somebody in Poland said they saw it. We should get a Nightcrawler whoa, puppet. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> we need I guess that would, just that. Be, no, we... that would just be a pair of pants. <laughs> yeah. It? Or, oh, that would yeah. be fun, though. Like, what's the mouth? The zipper? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it only has one eye, which is the button. <laughs> yeah. That would be really fun. Oh. Well, Milo. It is. Yeah. If our listeners want to know more of you or like stalk you, where sh- where can they find you? Like follow you like socials? N- n- nowhere. I'm not on social media. Milo's cool. a ghost. If you want to contact him, contact us and then we'll send him a uh, pigeon. Yeah. Please don't. Okay. Do you nope. take commissions? Do I take commissions? Yeah. Um, I will draw your mom for five bucks. <laughs> and, but only you mother. heard him, folks. <laughs> I only draw moms. You heard him, folks. If you want your mom drawn for five dollars, <laughs> let us Once know. Once again, we'll reach out to him for you. Yeah, reach out to us, and then we'll send Milo a carrier pigeon because that's the only way we can communicate <laughs> with him. <laughs> I'll, right. I'll probably respond in three to five business days. Don't worry. Yeah. Solid. Solid. Well, that's a wrap. Thank All you for right, listening right. to episode nine. Thank you. Thank y'all. Episode nine in the books. Unthank it was a good one. You. Thanks for being here, Milo. Or no, thank you. Stay spooky. <laughs> and once again, reach out to us. Stay spooky. We're yes. lonely. Yeah. <laughs> stay, stay spooky. Stay s- skeptic. I'm lonely. And stay sane. Yeah, keep We're your friends in the closet. Lock them away. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Bye. 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 I was wondering where my pants went. <laughs> <laughs>